All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today we have the lovely Rakol Batdorf kicking butt on the uh, podcast. How you doing, Rocky? I'm well, happy to be here. How are you, Jason? I am fantastic. Loving life, enjoying my uh, extended vacation. Forced vacation, I've been calling it. <laughs> the, the forced vacation, I like that, yeah. forced vacation. That works out nice. No, I'm loving it, you know, if I can get getting comfortable with the new lifestyle and trying to you know stay healthy and not go crazy what you been doing um same kind of pushing the rules a little bit uh hanging out traveling when i can painting at home a lot yeah uh, yeah like balance some things i'm like breaking the rules with and then sometimes i'm like i can't leave friends you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been an interesting uh transition from normal life i've been liking it uh like i don't know life got way out of hand for me personally i get wrapped up and like when you put something in front of me that makes me money and you know like a job work thing i just get absorbed in it and uh, i was letting a lot of shit just slide right like all the life stuff i was letting go and uh just focusing on money and um, I really find that this has just been a blessing. Uh, you know, in hindsight, it's like it really let me calibrate my necessities, what's important to me, like what I you should love be to doing. Do. Yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. what Jason likes to do, not like like when you're slaving away yourself at work. I've seen you work. I know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a madman. Yeah. You know, and I get obs- I get lost in things and obsessed with things, and just like I do with this, like uh, just like I have with this podcast thing. You know, I mean, my whole fucking house has turned into a. Uh, television studio now and uh it looks great yeah it's fun sounds great it's nice <laughs> you know it's like you know got the, got the lights and the cameras and the, the action and all that good stuff so it's fun yeah it's been fun i like it um yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i was kind of doing the similar thing um right before all of this happened i had picked up like a i'd went from hanging out you know me like i'm pretty uh leisurely person uh hanging out a lot and then i had, was working like two jobs before this happened seven days a week i was like i'm gonna finally like nail it down and handle business and be like that woman who handles stuff and <laughs> the universe was like not so soon not so fast little girl right <laughs> yeah so it wants me to have fun i guess yeah here yeah. we are <laughs> yeah i had uh I had, I had big plans as well i was uh I, man i that was when it started falling apart right like the the panic that set in and the uh i got excited did you i'm t- i'm a natural disaster person like Okay. Uh, oh, like the bigger the disaster, like the worse it is. I know this sounds terrible, like the more people killed. Yeah. That's my kind of national disaster. International disasters, <laughs> even better. Volcanic eruptions, love them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like chaotic and um, it's exciting to me. I wish it was a little more exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was hoping for a little more excite as well. I like, uh, I got all. Bodies in the streets. Yeah, ready no. to go. <laughs> Threw a fucking screen door up, you know, the, the the security door up, and like, we got our shit together, you know, we hunkered yeah. down, and we were like, oh, who knows what the hell's gonna yeah, happen? Bought a and, lot of gross food. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just went and like, there's no fucking food at all. I just started grabbing bought, like, cans of food. Five hundred chicken nuggets. Five hundred chicken nuggets is that what you got? Yeah. I was like, it'll last in the freezer a really long time. Um, there's still 500 chicken nuggets in my freezer. You haven't guys. touched them yet. <laughs> no, gross. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a like, man. I grabbed any canned food I could get. It was just like fucking. Who cares? Green beans, corn, whatever. Yeah. You know, some beans. Like it's just. It doesn't matter. You know, like fucking put some fucking food in a pile. Who knows what the hell's gonna happen with this situation? I I did that and then still proceed to order Postmates three times a day. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's my quarantine budget. Oh, <laughs> uh, Postmates. Mm-hmm. Guilty uh, pleasure. No, we hung, we hunkered down pretty good, and uh, we've been cooking a lot and and doing the the at home thing, and we even started a little garden. You know, I did some gardening. Kind of, yeah? I, killed, I killed about thirty six plants this spring. Oh, good for you. Uh, oh, I have left. I have like um three onions and some tomatillos that survived the what's a top oh a tomato tomatillo no, tomatillo is like a little pepper oh it's a little pepper salsa out of it okay Tomat- right. it's like a salsa made of baby with a tomato maybe interesting salsa tomato salsa tomato <laughs> i like it that's what we call it salsa tomato and you taught me a new thing today i have never heard of a tomatillo 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 they're hardy oh. anything on a vine in this weather guys get yeah. gardening yeah my tomatoes are doing good 
Yeah. We got like fucking red tomatoes out there. Like, at first, we were just like, ah, you know, we'll see what happens. And then it's, I like, it's growing. And then there's a fucking little green ball. You know, it's you so satisfying like, ball. to eat something you grew. But yeah. then it's also like, when you think of it in a grand scale, like what the love and you put into uh, one tomato mm-hmm. and then how you go through them at the store, you're like, wow, this was uh, 42 cents. And I'm like, I just put nine months of nourishment and love from seedling to this little thing. And I got like three tomatoes on a bush. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I don't think we appreciate our food whatsoever anymore. You know, like uh, it's uh, it, we're so separated from the process of where it comes from and how it gets to us. Right. Like we just we go out. We're these fucking, uh, you know, we're like these sharecropper type fucking citizens who go out and fucking we make money for the man. And then the man goes, this is where you get your food. And, you know, it was just like. Okay, I guess, I guess this that's is what the we deal. Eat. This yeah. is what we eat, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you're totally separated from that process. It grows nowhere near you. You have no chicken. idea. I'm yeah. weird. I mean, like I, I've worked at jobs where I had a lady like complain about a piece of plastic on the salad from the bag of salad, and I'm like, where did you think this came from? It comes in big bags in the back. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I apologize, but she's like, where could this plastic have come from? <laughs> yeah, like, I got news for you, lady. <laughs> that salad came in a fucking big bag. Big bag. <laughs> Yeah, we used to make, uh, damn, I think we used to make the salads in just this huge fucking tub, you know? And just like, okay, well, then you got a big, gigantic tub as big as we could fucking get in the freezer and just fill that shit with fucking lettuce and mix yeah. the greens. And, uh, yeah, you just go. Right. Fucking, yeah, restaurant work. I, uh, me and a, a lot of people feel like, you know, restaurant work is one of those things like uh, military service where you should. Do point. like at least one year of like waiting tables. <laughs> do that you do a year of military people. service? Like maybe your ass needs boot camp. Yeah, uh, you <laughs> like know? you kind of got a weird attitude. I don't like. It's like boot it and toot it for a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? Right. Um, uh, yeah, you get a new respect for that whole that whole thing when you you know th- all these people that never did wait tables, never did work in the kitchen, and never had to serve people fucking food. I didn't know about my first serving job at Vamped where I met yeah. you. Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't know people rolled silverware. I thought that there was fresh silverware every time or an infinite silverware rolling giant in the back i never even thought about it two times yeah. and my mom raised me serving tables so it's weird <laughs> <laughs> vegas is a weird place <laughs> yeah you know and i think a lot of our mm-hmm. uh, a lot of our existence is that kind of whole thing that we're getting at right we've been poking at it it's just like our our awareness and our reality is is just it's like this separated entity from what's actually happening exactly they, we just want the presentation we're like, yeah, yeah. yeah he's gotta <laughs> just look good to me and give me give me give me and I, you know like um the amount of luxury that that is, that we're entitled to like as americans we don't even see yeah. it right like it's hard to see it like i'm starting to see it right but even like fucking being born in this country and appreciating how much we really fucking have because you, you think you appreciate it, uh, right? Oh, yeah. But Travel you don't like- even know what you're missing out on, like, appreciating, which is, like, the simple thing, like, where the fuck did that silverware come from? Uh, exactly. And even, like, if you just travel very closely outside of the United States, you know what I mean? You'll see, yeah. like, not everywhere is as luxurious as you think, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, there are still places that, like, I went to the Dominican Republic last summer, mm-hmm. and, like, it's luxurious, but it's a third world country, y'all. It's yeah. still really underdeveloped. And like, I mean, like we had an emergency happen there and like they didn't have the means to help us, you know, like stuff like that. You don't, you totally take for granted in a place like this. And I mean, I think we've all taken for granted. I think like America as a whole, like I think yeah. we're all overworked. Like you said, you're kind of like a slave to the man and all that. And this has kind of made you realize like America has the means to look after their people for a few months and we all needed a break anyway kind of thing, you know? I think we all definitely needed a break. And, de- you know, it, I think it's uh, it's a great point for people to really realize who the fuck they are. I think a lot of people are faced with that, right? Where um, I have people who have never spent time ho- home alone, like hanging out with themselves. They don't even know who they are as a person or what makes them tick and like i'm just as guilty as, of that as, especially in a, a city as fast-paced as vegas there's always something fun to do i've spent two years going out every night and not focusing on the things at home that make me me you know so yeah. that is something that like since this happened i've started with my painting again and like a huge it's a huge personality trait of mine it's something that insanely makes me me it's a therapy you know what i mean um it's me presenting my emotions and feelings to the world is just how it comes out you know and like i've 
t- totally took that for granted. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I love about painting. I've, I've, I've recently started painting, and I really love it. That was one of the things that um, – it didn't happen at – the, the, when the virus happened and it happened before, I was like, I want to really want to start painting some of these things that I experience, um, and of course, it's uh, influenced by my psych- psychedelic experiences that I have totally. because <laughs> um, you know you can't take a picture of that, right? And that's one of the cool things about painting. And when I when I had that concept of like, oh man, I really want to show what I saw, right? But I can't. I have to. I have to. Translate it's your interpretation it, right? of wh- how you, what you saw and how you felt, basically. Yeah, because uh, you can't grab that moment out of the air. Yeah, there's and, no doing it. Yeah, that's a huge part of of painting as a process. You know what I mean? So it's like I call myself a process painter. Yeah. I never like how my paintings turn out for the most part. While I'm doing it, though, it's like magic happening before your eyes to see the different mediums interacting with each other. Um, it's a physical thing too. You, you mean you're moving your body in a coordinated. It's a coordination. It's almost like a dance you're having with a piece of paper, canvas, with it, whatever it may be. Yeah. So you got to kind of you got to be really in tune with yourself. And um, I found it's interesting to listen to yourself when you create in that way. Um, I've had a couple of days where I was listening to some really cool. We were just talking about singing bowls and stuff, and mm. the stuff I paint is a little more pure when I put on singing bowls. But like every once in a while, I'll get bored while painting, and I'll put on like some hip hop music, oh. and my paintings get like really aggressive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, like follows the yeah the energy changes and process driven creations. I guess that's what. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's um, you know, as as uh, ex- like beings that experience right like that w- that we are i think that's kind of the our our place here on the planet right or in in existence in the universe is to is to observe the universe and and place some kind of meaning on it through our eyes and through our perception uh it's a very human thing to do with it right? <laughs> not just let it be but try to understand it you know we're always trying to yeah figure it out (laughs) and the the painting right like if you if you do the class of painters and you put a bowl of fruit or say a a human you know uh model in front of all these people every single person's canvas is going to have a completely different look to it a completely different vibe and it's that translation not only the their skill sets as an artist um and their experiences as an artist and what they can f- do with their hands, but what they actually see and translate with their eyes and how they perceive it and then how that makes them feel and then what they put on the canvas. Yeah, some people canvas. can perceive like 70% more color than others. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So you just never, you never know what another person is looking at or what it feels like to them, if that makes sense. Or a picture can look a lot different if you're looking at it from a broad point of view or if it's zoomed in. You know what I mean? There's a lot more going on than you realize in any one little section i guess <laughs> yeah hmm. yeah and i always love that the the translation and the quality of that where um uh, you're kind of getting to look through someone else's eyes for a second or even through their soul almost you yeah. know uh when you when you get to observe someone's art or uh, you know hear someone perform and like sing and do like oh, yeah. musical uh talents as well uh it, it translates we were just talking about um like the different timbre of electric guitar, right? Like every guitar player has this to- tone signature. Fan. Yeah, yeah there's certain tell. people I can I can tell who's playing that guitar just based on like the, the to me it's tone I hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, I can't even. I'm trying to draw it with my hands. How sound sounds to me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I picture it. Where it hits on my ear, I'm like, oh, yeah. this is like over here, and this is down here. You know? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. But uh, my ears aren't over here. <laughs> 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 Silly. <laughs> But yeah, it's cool how the uh, yeah these human uh, these human experience machines just uh, they translate the world around them. Yeah, what are you what are you creating? Manner. I know I know this is your creation, your baby. Is there? Yeah. Are you? Um, I'm working on um, several things currently, right? So uh, I have some music going around in my head again, which I'm so thrilled about, right? Um, like I I I I'm working on projects and stuff with people, and I write music. Did we do this and that? Uh, and there's compilations, but there's moments in my life where I've had the song in me, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you go after it sometimes and sometimes, you know, like I'm sure like with creating art, you just paint and you have to c- continue to just like, well, you, you create. can't force it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, but you got to go and like put, put brush to canvas and just make something. And sometimes you're not the 110% most inspired, but you have the time and like, let's, let's continue to yeah. do this creative process. But then sometimes you're just like, Oh shit. 
I, I gotta got do this. I got something I, need to I gotta do get something. out. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that is the best feeling ever. Oh, I'm feeling that <laughs> way. I'm feeling that way right now about music. Like my appreciation for music and life in general has gone up a lot lately. Um and uh so I'm stoked about doing some songs. Um and uh yeah, and I'm like working on a a book that I always told myself I would write. Okay, yeah, so it's a great time too. to write. There's nothing. I mean, yeah. yeah, you have hours and hours. So many people out there are probably writers and they don't even realize it. Like, yeah, write things just down. Write <laughs> just start writing stuff, right? Just write and journal. And then like yeah. <laughs> erase all of it and then write it you again. Erase. Yeah, no, like just I say like, write. <laughs> and save it to the cloud, then maybe delete it if you don't want to look yeah. at it again, but don't erase it. Yeah. Journal, journal, journal. A journal can turn into a manuscript one day. You never know. Yeah. yeah. I just mean like just start moving, just get get some stuff going, you know, get a couple sentences on the page. Because like for me, um, writing, uh, it, 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 the challenge is, is that, that first sentence, the, the, the first the thing that you, you write, uh, just like getting the process moving yeah, right tr- i'll sit there with a blank screen on my computer a blank piece of paper in front of me on the notepad for a while have right? you checked out okay, huh. if you're into the um like writing mode and you need like i've been taking some courses on like coursera in my spare time oh, yeah? This. So, yeah there's all kinds of stuff there's classes from um ivy league schools on there on creative writing and things like that um i'm taking contemporary art after world war ii right now from moma so So, yeah there's all kinds of stuff Um, i already completed one course on there and it's about the knowledge you want to share with yourself or you know what i mean if it's out there and the universe wants to give it to you for free i say learn something take it you know like um check it out it's i definitely will yeah i definitely will i was doing the um, free knowledge (laughs) i was doing the mit edx courses um and i just started math all over again. And oh my so God. I was just redoing my, all my math stuff and trying to like refresher and like get my math skills up, you know, because some of the books that I've been reading, they start going into like, um, pre calc and algebra, higher, higher trigonometry. Level math. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I accidentally and, signed up for the science of cooking from oh, yeah. Harvard University, you guys, and it should be called Hardford uh, <laughs> because yeah. they, it's like you're talking about moles and figuring out, you know what I mean, like the chemical makeup of flour <laughs> and, nice. and some more stuff. And like, I was intrigued um, and well in over my head. I, yeah. I switched courses, guys. <laughs> well, cooking is chemistry. I mean, it's completely chemistry. And this is you're, like, just, you're doing a bunch of chemical reactions that you then eat later. Oh, yeah. This right? is dope. This has like Jose Andre, Andres from Bazaar Meats teaching you spherification and like, okay. yeah, all kinds of. That's so cool. Yeah, crazy sciencey stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything, um, everything just goes so deep, right? Like mm-hmm. there's just, um, I, I, there's no such thing as an expert. I, I don't think uh, anybody can actually know everything about their <laughs> t- specific subject. Uh, and that's coming from a guy who spent the last 20 plus years just studying audio. And it's like every step I take, right, where I learn something new about audio or I g- gain a new skill set, um, I, I move into a new field of, of audio and start learning that the path in front of me becomes exponentially longer, right? Like, it's just like, oh my God, I know. I've spent 20 years, right? And people will call me and be like, you're an expert on audio, right? Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. And of course, I can answer that question right away. Yeah. It, I've, like, I've been doing this for 20 <laughs> years, right? But in no way would I ever consider myself an expert on because it. Because while you're learning. You're just like, there's so much to learn. Because while you're learning... You mean stuff that's already out there. There's a kid, probably half your age, yeah. on a linear level, making the next new thing. You know what I mean? You guys are, are running parallel next to each other, and you're maybe faster. I don't know. Right. Who knows? you yeah, got to learn younger. both. you got to learn what's been here, and then, you know what I mean? And then there's people out there learning all this technology plus the brand new stuff. Oh, so yeah. that's it's a ton to learn. And I have to do the same thing, and it's like... Uh, just keeping up with the newest, uh, latest, and greatest what we're going to be operating, right? Because that's kind of where where what what I do is I go out and like they're just like, yeah, we got this new stuff. You know how it works? It's like, no, nobody knows how it fucking works. It came out last week. <laughs> we're going to take doing it out of here. the box, right? <laughs> like, uh, but that's why you called me. I deal with these thingamabobs mm. that you fucking like so much, and you're you, know, you bought the new one. Professional experimenter. There I'll you figure go. it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Master experimenter. experimenter. That's it. <laughs> Just throw me, just give me some, just give me a little bit of time and, and the manual and the internet and I will get in there and we'll make it work. Right. But again, yeah, but in no way would I ever call myself an expert at doing that because of, uh, all the things that I 
am currently pursuing trying to learn and going, wow, there's, I don't know any of this, right? So, I mean, like, how dare I? Yeah. And I think every field has that endlessness to it almost, where it's like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you could be this amazing chef, right? But it's like, have you even started What's to consider the, all the chemistry <laughs> the that's involved basics. with it, right? Now, are you yeah. getting into, you know, you can get it into chemistry and get into the math behind it. And it's just like, and that'll just take you down a fucking wormhole. And then that well, leads to all these other fucking tangents. For and me, it's like it never the joy out of it. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like a, I feel like dashing this much in, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a feeler with like everything I do probably. So yeah, yeah. mathematically proposed, propelled food making is probably not. Yeah. Gonna be my thing. Not even in a quarantine. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, my food skills have gone down, I feel like. Like, it's sad cooking, and then, like, you can't have a group of people over to cook for, so I'm just like, yeah. nothing's tasty. I'm bored. Like, maybe I just won't eat, you know? <laughs> like, oh, uh, we've been figuring out new meals. We got a new Instapot. I love the Instapot. Yeah. I'm a huge tight. Instapot's tight. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have one anymore. I had one. R.I.P. Instapot. Uh oh. It didn't blow up. No. <laughs> no. What happened? <laughs> I'm, what happened? I'm, now I'm curious. I think every the world wants to know what happened. It blew to up, guys. Subject change. Subject change. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so yeah, we've been trying new recipes with the Instapot, and like you know, we're at home cooking for each other and fucking doing that kind of stuff. You know, tonight we got uh, we were steaming artichokes tonight. You nice know? in the nice Instapot. Healthy. No, I think we're just we got a big pot and a steamer tray. I mean, put them in the Instapot. We did it three yeah, minutes as opposed to twenty. <laughs> right. Well, I guess we could do them one at a time, right? They would fit. Whack in the them Instapot both in there. Time. I won't be like too small. Size? Yeah, they're they're good size artichokes. I mean, these things are just. Pumped. I say Instapot them. These are the GMO artich- artichokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the good ones. The big boys. Yeah. Meaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking caterpillars die instantly when they look at them, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no I'll never be a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, I see, uh, so let's uh, let's let's fucking uh, take it back to the art situation too that we were talking about because I know I got a lot of uh, your art here on my screen. Yay! And uh, I have this duber that okay. we're supposed to smoke. So let me uh, click this button right here. Wait, Jason, are you saying you want to smoke Boom. some weed and check out some art? I'm gonna smoke. <laughs> so, so, so what? Like, look at this piece right here. So we're at Cherry Popped Art on Instagram mm-hmm. at Cherry Popped Art, and we got this beautiful, colorful piece. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, this piece right here while I uh, spark this duper up? This is mixed media on canvas, and I started with. It's probably been three different paintings before this, to be honest. Um, I, previous to this, I've been working like really thin textures and kind of leveling shadows on top of each other, if that even makes sense. Um, and here I was just inspired with big, thick, bold color on, pan- on canvas. Um, and this is cool because I accidentally pulled a tube of o- red oil without realizing it. So like that depth you're seeing from that red popping against the blue yeah. is a complete accident. Oh, but I like it. Happy, happy accident. <laughs> happy accident. You should, my carpet in my room is red because I dropped that canvas on the floor when it was. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Sometime during its like six day uh, dry time. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So we got another one right here. Here's another one of Cherry Pop's art. And like Cass is kind of. Yeah. This one, I like the idea of um, texture and then neutral tones with that like something coming through it. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking, uh, and then this guy's really cool right here. This was Alex. not supposed to be your boy. Um, who does it look like? It's not supposed to be Tom Petty, guys. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> now that you say that, I see the Tom no, Petty thing. I love to draw, um, like creepy, weird things with strange proportions, big eyes, creepy shading. And this is kind of what I've been like sketching and doodling since I was a kid. It's kind of. Um, always like that so the eyes won't be quite right or one will be drooping or too big um, I like really skewed funky creepy proportion I like it I appreciate it especially like the eye being tilted the wrong direction and how long the nose is it's really cool looking yeah there's like shadows and weird spots it looks like the f- like fat on the face didn't develop properly I like it yeah yeah that's a really cool piece I also like that with uh, like uh Whenever I'm doing my own thing, thank you very much. I've been um, uh, super um, like secure in the fact that I have no skills in painting, right? So I just move forward in my painting, and I don't trip about none of it. That's I'm great. just like, 
I'm just like, don't yeah. get in your fucking head. Don't try to make it perfect. Don't it's gonna to. end up sloppy. It's gonna end up like the, and it's okay. It's art, yeah. you know. Well, it's like, just, a, just move. You know, you get yeah. it done. That's like the beautiful thing. It's like, um, ignorance is bliss. You know what I mean? When yeah. you're when you don't have the technical skill before you learn the technical skill, it's like a, it's a more innocent way of creating. I think. Um, I I have friends throughout the city. You know what I mean? Who are professional, educated artists. Yeah. You know, and like I respect them so very much. It's just a different process. I'm not in it. Um, you know what I mean? To just solely to make money, we'll say, you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely more of a, um, fulfilling, self-fulfilling experience for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've been really enjoying it myself and, uh, I'd love to paint with you sometime. Dude, we have a little, uh, studio area upstairs and the yeah, thing, and, or maybe I can come over to yours and fuck totally. paint or whatever, whatever way to do. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's super fun. Boxes of paint. We can yeah. throw I, on canvas. I want to, I've been wanting to work on some huge, like, like how I was saying, it's a physical thing as well. Like, yeah. I want to put paint on my body and like throw it at a wall, you know, ah. and like see that energy, like, and how it it. Where where do we have the space to do such things? You know? Right. Yeah. That is the thing. Yeah, I'm sure I my know. roommates would be stoked about the state of our home. <laughs> if I was just throwing paint everywhere. I know. I need a big space. I, I mean, like uh, the the concept of like a, a large like warehouse space, just an open the, the area, dream. right? To like the just dream. to film and and do crazy shit. These and, spaces uh, exist here in town, you know. Yeah, they they do. Yeah, we just gotta uh, come up with the fucking cash to to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, hopefully one of these days, Space Brand will end up moving into a big warehouse space where we can. Do the big sheet, just big all shots a creative and, collective, you know, like that's yeah, that's that's the idea, you know. We we really want to, we really want to have like a nice space to for the family to be creative and start making all kinds of cool shit. And um, I think the the dream of like becoming super famous and and like and a celebrity or <laughs> like you know like this is gonna be like i'm gonna be a millionaire that is i'm gonna no, be so not the dream i wouldn't yeah, want to be famous no it's just gone not. right it's like i just want to create with my life Even to create anonymously is like the best yeah. you know what i mean like if you are you can just be appreciated like if you noticed on my i don't put really put like my art stuff on my social ins or instagram it's not the same crowd that's not what it's there for it it's I view a whole other like level of stuff while I'm on there, and it's yeah. just it's it's for a different crowd, you know. It's Absolutely. To, yeah, if you don't appreciate it, or I feel like, I don't know, I don't want the the opportunity, I guess, to be like, I don't know, I like the <laughs> to do it a little more <laughs> randomly. Yeah. I guess it's easier. It's more. It's I think you view things a little more honestly if you don't like attach so what you know of someone to it. You know, so like that's my. There are no pictures of me on my art page, which is cool. Like, uh, yeah, it's just about what I make. I dig that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> An Angela has a friend who has a YouTube channel and he does uh, comic book stuff, but he doesn't do. He does the same thing. You only see his hands. Yeah, on the I love that. His, face, his face. Yeah, and it's just what you're into. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not being distracted. I've um, recently been watching like ASMR videos. Do you know about this? Mm. ASMR. I, I've heard of this. I've heard of this. I've, 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 I've drawn a goddamn okay. blank. What, what, is, it? what it, is it? It's basically like sounds you can make by touching like microphones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like little whispers talking like this. Oh, okay, yeah, It yeah, makes yeah. people feel good. You know what I mean? So I've been viewing these videos and I've, oh, I, I too am like, oh my God, is the girl doing this super hot? Is, am I just entranced by that? Or am I actually like, is this therapeutic? I'm trying to figure it out, you know? That shit's so. crazy. I think I saw it on Tosh.0 oh or something like that, where it's just like, they're like rubbing feathers on the microphone. I'm all about it. I watched, I didn't even know it was all about it until yeah. I realized like, uh, I was like an hour and 30 minutes into like soap shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, what did you say? You just say soap <laughs> shaving? Just is look that it up, guys. Said? YouTube soap shaving. It's super so relaxing. Soap shaving. Soap shaving. They shave a soap, and the sound that it makes makes my, like, spine tingle. It's almost sexual, but not sexual. Like, it can be... I could watch soap shaving in front of anyone and still feel really good. It releases hella horror, like, the good feel-good chemicals just start flooding, and, like, I just really? feel like a cat getting scratched on my head. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I'll have to check some of that. You thing. should. I highly recommend, guys. So ASMR. Kidding. It's. <gasps> I just smoked that weed. Let me see if I can remember. Ah. Oh, don't make me look silly, self. That's what it does when you smoke the weed. I you know. know. Hold on, I'm having a little brain slip. You don't have to take life so seriously when you're smoking a doober. You okay, know? we'll come back to that. It'll pop in my head, guys. It'll pop in your head. See what happens oh, is uh, your brain. Uh, 
it it starts categorizing like things and it goes uh it goes okay we're gonna find this fucking information that you want i'm on it yeah, and you- it goes uh it's definitely none of these and then you never can yeah. think of it when again right the files. because it just locks those off it's like it's not any of these and it just like bulk dumps <laughs> my brain just all these files things. and then i noticed all these other files yeah yeah Okay, it will come to me. I feel like we should look it up though, so that I'm not just spreading like. Yeah, I can, can look we, it up. Can I can do, look can we it up. I got a, I got a thing right here. I have here. to know. I got a computer right here and stuff. Auto sensory. So, ASMR. Let's say auto sensory. Typed into Google comes up with aut- a- autonomous sensory meridian response. Oh yeah, guys, that's what I'm talking about. That uh, the tinglys. That's the response. Yeah, the tinglys. Yeah, it gives you the tinglys. The tinglys. See, I, I uh, the freaking YouTube thing changed all the rules, so it's like I can't just dive into somebody else's ASMR. But we don't want to give them any credit anyways, guys. Check yeah, out. Yeah, but check it out on your own. Check out ASMR videos on YouTube. And I actually, guys, I have an Instagram called the tinglys. You have an Instagram <laughs> yeah, called I've, the tinglys. Yeah, you can. I, I have can like just out, a couple of videos. It's new. I bet I can check out your Instagram. I mean, I don't see yeah. why I can't go to your Instagram and well, show your Instagram. Can you play it? Because it might. Yeah. Give these folks the tingly. There's one I speak in Hebrew. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's called. It's on Instagram. It's called the Tinglys. Mm-hmm. We're looking. We're looking. That's a nice little. Here's another thing. I, I dig I it. Do. I dig it. It's uh, uh yeah. That is you. Oh shit. Yeah. And this is you doing it. Yeah. Um. I can totally can play I this. Yeah. It's uh. So this is just gonna. Look, it's a some very simple thing, guys. But I would say, yeah, that's it. Yeah, what, either, one. either one. Yeah, either one. Okay. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice <laughs> it is. Let's turn the audio up on this computer. <laughs> I like this one. Autosensory meridian response. <laughs> that's a, my first ASMR video I did, guys, and like, I guess when it works for me, I show my friends this, and they're like, I'm feeling like weird feelings towards you right now, and I'm like, it's working, that's great, yeah, like, it's it's supposed to be super, like, pleasant, but it kind of makes you like, ooh, yeah, it's saucy. It's saucy. <laughs> it's not I supposed to be saucy, though. It's it's just a little bit of sauciness. Yeah, so that's ASMR, but soap shaving is... Soap shaving? Uh, yeah. I don't need save, shave any soap myself. <laughs> <laughs> I just mostly look at other people doing it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Fucking, uh, I have not heard of the soap shaving one. That's a new one for me. I, I just... We're gonna have to look into this again. Maybe he can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, it's I'm gonna make you look, happy. It's. This, I'm this gonna even look up some just for me, real quick. Uh, personal, uh, private party, so private shaving party. So shaving party, real quick. <laughs> while we're in the middle of this fucking podcast, I didn't give a shit. I hope that know? it works on you because otherwise, if I'm hanging out with like two other people who don't get it or feel it, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe it's just me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Constantly shaving. ASMR soap oh, shaving. Oh, here we go. Videos. I'm worried about how this is gonna, what this is going to do to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to have to get new couch cushions. Oh, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to relax so hard on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, and then he just, uh, he's unpeeling the soap. And soap boners. I hope that we don't give anyone any soap boners he's on accident. Soap. Ah, oh, he's breaking out you the potato peeler. You have to hear it. You can't, so can, can you I, hear I, it? I can hear it. I'll put a little on the headphones here. This is, I, I can tell this isn't soap. <laughs> no, it's, it's Zoat soap. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on, it's getting more pleasant. I, do you guys... <laughs> it's so it's so delicate of a thing, right? It's like it's it's subtle. That's so weird. It's That's great. That's not soap shaving, is it? It's so, a- ASMR. Another one. Let's we try can, another one. We uh, can do better. Yeah, we'll find a different one. We'll find a different one. This is what I'm saying. You see, like we've been like looking at these things for a couple minutes now. This is how I found myself into it. I was like, well, what do you mean? What are we watching? And then I was like watching it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> found all different kinds. That's oh, there's one where where people. Um, oh, and this is a the thing, they eat 
and it's the sounds of them eating up close and people who are lonely i guess watch these videos of other people eating their meat their meal up close and there's girls who make like money like through youtube or who knows what you know yeah. and um it's just the the mouth noises and the food noises and like that intimacy of eating with someone i guess yeah that lonely people don't always get that's fucking weird. Look it up. It's weird. ASMR, guys. It comes in all shapes and sizes. I'm sure there's one for you. <laughs> it's like the softest core porn I've ever watched. Is You're what, welcome. That's what that was right there. We're easing you in. We're easing you in. Speaking of easing it in, what's in that box over there? Oh, I know. I just got it today. <laughs> I got my friggin' tushy. I, I'm so stoked. I'm you excited. No for, I idea. wish it was installed. Like, I, I feel know, like it right? should have been ready to go when I got it, here. I should have had it fucking I set up. You've been so your you first reviewer. Dem- <laughs> you could have done the demo on the fucking on the toilet. I will let you do the demo, and then I'll redo the first review. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. The, uh, no, I'm so stoked. I've been wanting one for a while. Angela got me a tushy for my birthday, and so now... Uh, uh, fuck toilet paper. I toilet just, paper's for crazy people who want to go raid the store. I got and who a hate fucking, their buttholes. <laughs> I got a fucking bidet where I'm like, you're living I, in luxury over here. I I think the bidet is the way to go. People don't know what they're missing. They don't. I've noticed yeah. also though that like when the toilet paper is sold out, there's still plenty of wet wipes. So these people yeah. just don't know. They just don't know how to do it, right? We just have to talk about it, and then people yeah. will know all about how to proper care for the kulu. Right. Well, I was talking to, like I was saying before the podcast, um, I was talking to Genocide over in Thailand. Yeah. And I was like, so what did they do about the toilet paper in fucking Thailand, right? And she goes, nothing. Fucking toilet <laughs> paper is for white people. She's oh, like, and they she's use like, a hand. Yeah, no, the, she's like, they have every single house has a bidet. There's, oh, a bidet. If, if, if <laughs> they they use a, so, they t- the, so it's just cultural, right? Like they, she was saying, it's like to them, it just makes fucking sense. If you have indoor plumbing, right? You put the toilet in and you put the fucking butt cleaner in. It's just like, that's they just have how everywhere, it works. But here, like everywhere. In Italy, yeah. there's always a bidet. And yeah. in most of like, the countries I've been outside the United States, they don't even have like that upper toilet. See, there is no sitting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she said it's not even like, um, like just like the ray, just anywhere you go, right? It's just like a, there's like a, just a fucking hand, like a nozzle on a hose. Even it's just like it's not even a fancy nice. one, you know. Like nice. it's so you're not living in like luxury. I've heard the ones in Japan but that's are just super like, nice. They're that's like just heated. like their three three seashells. Is they just have bidets everywhere, right? Like that's just how they do it. I have friends who have them here, and I'm always like, oh, yeah. I like these people. I'm, <laughs> they have I, the squatty potty uh, bidet combo. That's exactly what's happening. Do we got you? The squatty I potty have a upstairs. question about the squatty potty. Yeah. I have two questions about the squatty potty. I own a squatty potty. Okay. And sometimes I'm like, is this like mine? <laughs> Do other people come in here and like post up on this thing? Is it a personal use item? Like everything else is like communal in the in the, in the toilet. <laughs> uh. I would say definitely communal. Like if it, there's a squatty potty in the bathroom, you put your feet up on it, right? I mean, like, I guess. I mean, I have a male roommate, and I've noticed like, not to put him on blast, yeah, he's but my like guys squatty stand potty up. Potty no, motherfucker. he pees on it sometimes. <laughs> I have to like throw oh, it in no. the shower, and I'm like squirting it with Clorox. I'm like this motherfucker. These guys. I have a guy room. I'm 32 year old, and I have a male roommate, so it's my own fault, I guess. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Should have. I mean, I presented him with a fresh squatty potty. The least he could do is not piss on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to move. We actually moved ours into the the second bathroom, so it's just like, it's like that's where we go poop. <laughs> that's the pooping bathroom. That's the pooping bathroom, because it's like we got the squatty potty. Bathroom in there number and two. Bathroom number two. <laughs> 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 yeah, and now it's about to have a bidet up in there, so It's just always when you have luxury. guests over, just direct them. Yeah. Just the powder room. This is the powder room. I know, you gotta call it something new now, like... <laughs> Really, like, really relaxing. Something really. You guys need a water feature in there, also. Right. We got like fucking Bellagio <laughs> fountains in our fucking guest bathroom. So I mean, we're and now you're getting a new Bellagio fountain in there too. Yeah, we're killing it. Man. Is this a handheld or is it like a? Ch- ch- no, it's a. Uh, it like hooks up to the seat. Nice. And like has a little like blaster. It even's got like a little blaster <laughs> adjuster, right? <laughs> okay, this is standard. And uh, like, or like it like moves it, right? Like, and then you well, get, next it on your next to the show, hot water. On your next show, I right? expect to hear all. Oh yeah, I've seen this setup before. Yeah, it has hot water. It okay. has pressure. Level. Oh, it feels very pleasant. By the way, I have tried this one. Have you had the <laughs> tissue one? Yeah. I've only uh, I've only gotten uh, to. Does it have an air dryer at the like end? Luxury hotels on the strip or something. <laughs> Does it have an air dryer at the end? Dude, I know, right? That's, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, he's like, I do. I don't know if you guys do. <laughs> that's fucking love right there. Aww. Damn. You have that no is, idea. I know you guys are. You know, you know. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Creepy babies. That's so <laughs> fucking great. No, I love it. I can't believe she got me the one. Uh, and she got me the one Joey Diaz is always pushing, too. And I fucking love Joey Diaz. I don't know like who Joey a, Diaz is. There other, oh I know, like, two brands of Squatty Potty, and Squatty yeah. Potty has a bidet. Yeah. No, Sorry, I, Tushy. Joey Diaz is just <laughs> crazy motherfucker. What's uh, he from? What is he? What is he? Uh, he's about? a stand-up comedian, and he has uh, uh, he has a fucking podcast called The Church. Okay. And uh, he's just this fucking guy from the East Coast who's just like no nonsense, fucking yeah. You know, yeah. I listen real, to the real motherfucker stand-up, but it's like on on a SM or something. I don't know. Right? Yeah. But XM, SM, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Oh, XM uh, Radio. She's got the, she's got the XM. Yeah, but it'll just like play, so I don't ever know who's being funny. Yeah. Unless I recognize them, I guess. No, we've been, uh, that's the other thing I'm doing. I'm working on my, uh, my stand-up bit, right? So. I've heard stand-up is the hardest thing that one could possibly do. It's very difficult. I would love to. I've heard it's just the art of being a good storyteller. So you taking the, the yeah. same funny stories you know, you know what I mean? And like, usually if they've happened, that's great. I, I would love to try stand-up a time. Come try with me. It, I like, I like me, I'm a, I like goofing around. So, yeah, yeah. I like to bother people, you know, yeah. like I think you're funny. I you know, I think you can you <laughs> entertain people for five, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, right? I Before mean, they're like, Ugh. Yeah. I mean, that's all is. is there a commercial break coming? <laughs> it's we like I haven't how, had one in a while. <laughs> how long can you uh hold people's attention and keep them entertained? The half the t- half the time, I mean, you don't even have to be making them laugh per se, right? Like you said, it's storytelling, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, like an, it's an interesting them. story with some laughs in it. Yeah. You know, that's that's a good part of it, right? And uh, it's not all jokes. Like I've been, I've been trying to break it down, and, and um, one of the things I've been doing is watching like the same comedian do like multiple sets. Like I love that about fucking YouTube, right? You can yeah. just uh, there's just so much out there, and so you can see him telling the same fucking jokes, but not in the same way, and uh, and how it works whenever he tells it this way, but it doesn't work when he tells it this way, and then he's just like, and in the middle of that, right? So like. He's got some fucking stories that he tells, right? And you can see how, um, like, for me personally, he had, there's a set list. And um, once I started watching the same comedian do the same thing over and over again, I can see the set list now in my head, right? Yeah. I go, oh, so this is the fucking bus joke, and then he's going to talk shit about this thing right here. He's going to tell this story, then he's going to do this fucking this. joke right here, right? And I was like, motherfucker, I'm getting it. <laughs> so I started writing my fucking, my my stuff together yeah. and then it's, it's just a like monologue. yeah you're here's... standing up there for an hour talking to yourself yeah. up to an hour talking to yourself right yeah it's like come out here's some fucking jokes real quick then i'm gonna tell a story then here's some fucking jokes real quick i'll tell another fucking story another fucking really good joke maybe one more story fucking out of here and then you're, you've been up on stage for like 30 minutes yeah it's and just the art of connecting people with people and noticing things that are ridiculous that they also find ridiculous i know uh. it's the art of being ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a ridiculous I love person. things that are, I find so many like d- ties in this universe. Comedy to me is just like the most relieving thing. I just think that there is so much that's just silly, you know? Like, and then I like really obscure co- connections to silliness, I guess. Like, that's why comedy is funny to me. I'm like, I don't know. I like the funny jokes that like minutes later, you're like, oh my goodness, that was went deeper than I realized, you know? Like, yeah. Now, comedy's one, comedy's one of my favorite things. And, um, as they get older, it's like I, it's my go-to. Like at nighttime, I'm just like I don't know what to watch. I'm not really feeling. Ah, we've been watching shows and these fake story things, you know, for a fucking while. It's like I've had enough of the stories, and like I just put on a random comedian and like let him just fucking tell jokes on the TV. And there's just like there's infinite comedians out there, so it's so great. You, and like half of them are fucking terrible. Yeah, and I get, half I, of them are great. You know, so. I mean, there's everyone has their brand of comedy. We were just talking about this earlier about how. Uh, Monty Python to some people is hilarious. It's a little too slapstick and like, and obvious to me. It's too slapstick and too obvious. I like things that are a little more subtle and clever, you know, like yeah. like or cheeky as fuck or like <laughs> really wildly inappropriate or people things that push the you know what I mean like push the envelope a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like I was uh, what was I talking about earlier? Oh, the Broad City stuff. I, I, yeah, but you haven't seen, seen it. it. Yeah, I gotta show you. Gotta check that fucking stuff out. But yeah. Um, no, I like the the cheeky, punchy, fucking comedy. That's just really fun. Yeah, certain uh, sketch comedies, okay. Like if it's and there's an art, you know what I mean. There's like where it's, in within the improvisation, you know what I mean. Like 
where people are really feeding off rebounds or it's it's forced and it's it's contrived it doesn't you don't feel it you got it it's it's the art of connecting with people and reading a room and how they feel you know like oh yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's another one i like watching <laughs> who is that goddamn comedian <sighs> she's over there uh, we were watching, uh, but he's fucking, he's so fantastic. Uh, oh man, I'll fucking remember his name later. But he's like, uh, he's been doing it forever, and he's just telling stories about the road and being in, and just he's been in every little shitty fucking club. And the guy's like, goddamn, fucking 70 years old at this point, and he's just been doing stand up for 50 years. And the amount of shit that guy's been through and the stories that guy can tell infinitely. I mean, he can just stand on stage <laughs> and just talk infinitely until fucking you know everybody in the room is fucking dead yeah and uh uh i don't know that's just that's this is just something to that man that's uh it comes to time and experience and all that bullshit or like i'd love to hear you shock some people and make them laugh <laughs> yeah let no. me know when you're doing a stand up i'll come i'll roll through oh totally i'll yeah, bring you... some people who also like to get the giggles yeah I'll smoke some weed before to make sure it's 200 percent funnier than you intended that's exactly Bam. what you gotta do <laughs> the higher you get the funnier i am but uh, no, it's uh, it'll be fun. I think we're gonna try to do some stuff at Dive Bar, and I'll go hit some of the spots on the strip and stuff like that. We've been putting together, I've been putting together a short five, and I'm gonna just try to put together like a couple different short fives, and just go do some spots like that. Yeah, get started. Get there, show up early, hang out, make yeah. friends with the people. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's Vegas. It'll be fun, and then you know, it's just like get up on. Can stage you imagine going and... to a place and being funny with the group of people around you right now? Like. If that yeah. were an option. <laughs> I would love that so much. Right? I would Sanitize love that so Sanitize the much. microphone, bring your own. Yeah, bring my own fucking microphone. Are you funnier, like, with or without a mask? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Talking about fucking goddamn corona mask. Like, man. what if, like, you have no, yeah. like, face, is just eyes talking to you? Is comedy going to be funny anymore? Like, right, all your expressions are gone. Yikes. It's like, all oh, right. Mm -hmm. Jim Carrey's out of a job, guys. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cool cat, right? Oh yeah, I love where that guy's in it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did Vibes. you see that special of uh, on I think on Netflix where it was talking about the Man on the Moon movie and how he was doing the character actor part for um um how do I not? It's because yeah, because we have Cause to. Because we're, we're smoking goddamn weed. Let's smoke some more and see if it comes to you. Yeah, I know That's exactly. What I Spark do. that goddamn <laughs> duber up. Stop making us think of things. It's, I know. I gotta <laughs> think of things, right? No. Um. But yeah, he he lost his fucking mind. Uh, playing the the character and. Uh, uh, Andy Kaufman. Oh, Andy Hoffman. God, uh, Andy God Andy damn it. I'm I fucking, I love Andy Kaufman so much. I don't like, okay, so this is where, like, our brand of humor differs. Yeah. I call this, like, boy comedy versus. Yeah. I have girl brains. I don't yeah. have to tell you. Like, there's, there's the Monty Python stuff. I'm like, eh, that dude stuff. It's, like, yeah. It is dude stuff. They're all kind of, yeah. Um, trailer Park Boys, absolutely not. not no chick likes Trailer Park Boys. It's disgusting. Everything about it is, like, gross to me for some yeah. reason. Like, I even, I don't think they're trying to be always gross. The, the the trick to watching <laughs> Trailer Park Boys, the trick to watching Trailer, and I love this too, it. is because it helps with uh it helps with your presence, right? Like finding your presence in the moment at any time watching Trailer Park Boys. If you're not laughing, just say out loud to somebody or just to yourself exactly what's happening on the screen at any moment. <laughs> and as you're just saying it out loud, you just be like, Am, "Is this what I'm fucking watching right now?" Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> is Randy really standing there with a cowboy hat on and sunglasses, no shirt with his fucking gut hanging out, <laughs> trying to whore himself out for fucking cheeseburgers? It sounds like downtown Las Vegas. Right I don't know why you're so shocked. Take a drive. I know, right? <laughs> there's totally a lot ridiculous. going on downtown right now, guys. So, Blast. yeah. There's just no, yeah, that's one of those shows where there's no, um, there's no punchlines, right? They don't fucking set up jokes and do punchlines. They just do insane, stupid shit that's just... No human being should be doing this. Why are you doing this? Anybody with any fucking sense would not be doing this right now. And this is their this is their logic as it leads them down the the wrong path constantly. <laughs> always the wrong yeah. path. Yeah. Uh, I like like chaotic. I'm like it's always sunny when I saw that. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like I was like, is this a lot like there's a couple shows that get me. That one, like when he, um, the Christmas episode is the best one. Like, he's like, Did you fuck my mom, Santa Claus? He bites his neck, like incredible moment it, like for me that was just brilliant i don't know like that's pretty funny for me no he just wins awards for that yeah i was he's dying. like crying <laughs> poor guy he's like the santa claus didn't come over and bring your mommy presents too 
<laughs> like what? He's like, I'm pretty sure all those Santas are running a train on your mom, dude. It's perfect. <laughs> no, no, that's not what was going on. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, he was. He was like. Like that was some acting. He was touched. He had tears into his yeah. eyes. He was hurt. He I mean, you believe as man. he's chewing that dude's throat <laughs> out. You know, I mean, you believed it. Yeah, he committed. I like it. I'm with it. Oh yeah. Charlie Day. Charlie Day's the man. Yeah. I hope he got a little. I hope they gave him a little something for that role. Oh, he's doing just fine for himself. Okay. Good. Did you see the thing that he did on the Super Bowl? No. Where he was in every commercial? No. It, like, it was so weird. Like, they what? did this. I couldn't even tell. I mean, when was he the did, Super Bowl? Did, right, we, yeah, did yeah, they cancel the Super Bowl this year? Right? No, no, no. They got away with the Super Bowl. <laughs> was that they were able to, or they were able to get it out right, right before everything would just shit. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. So, um, but I'm, no, he was in, like, every fucking commercial. His career's doing great. <laughs> Uh, they did some crazy cross promotional thing where he was just like he got a stain on his shirt and then fucking he was like uh, I needed to get a Tide stick or something mm-hmm. right but then he's like walking through like the Doritos commercial and the Pepsi commercial like looking for this fucking Tide stick I was just like Jesus Christ Charlie you're just just killing it man he's on like getting he's, paid his fifteen minutes are right now Charlie you know paid. What I mean like he's getting he mm-hmm. he's he's got the spotlight on a big time from that show and he deserves it he's fucking hilarious yeah that whole show is just really really silly um i love like danny devito's good everyone's good oh, danny devito's a creepy girl she's it. good everyone's good yeah their whole thing is like um um everything they do is what you're not supposed to do right <laughs> like on a direct opposite <laughs> they're so level, bad at right? everything they're so bad at everything well they they make all the like uh they make all the decisions uh a against practical logic like, and against like, each other constantly too, yeah right? like it's all this greed and selfishness <laughs> and uh and they just no don't fucking give a, a team. fuck <laughs> no. with, about anybody they ignore each other they yell over the top of each other it's just like not a single thing that you see on this screen is how you should ever behave ever in any situation these are horrible fucking people right can you imagine being friends with them oh i would not be friends <laughs> with those people like i love watching them live in their own personal hell that they've created on earth on that show right like that's like literally what they're doing right they 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 just their own personal skills are such shit that they just torture each other infinitely on the, and during their lives, yeah, and uh, and it's just fucking hilarious to watch. Danny DeVito, master of no fucks given. Yeah. Love him. Oh, he's he's the best. The episode with uh, where it was uh, just Danny DeVito through his eyes the whole episode. Oh no, I haven't seen that. That's a million that? episode too. I haven't seen that one. You haven't seen it? I'll go. Well, I'm watch it tonight. That's oh great. my god. Dude. I watch them like randomly, so I haven't seen. That's not one that I've like watched all the way through. I just you go watch random. them randomly. Yeah, ra- super random. Dude, it's a story. It's a <laughs> chronological. Okay. Happening. I know, like I have seen enough to know, like the the general, like I know, like the waitress and yeah. you know what i mean i know yeah. like everyone has their role or whatever but if you watch it episode to episode like they work really fucking hard on it like mac uh mac who does like he's like the <laughs> the, the main guy of the show right uh fat he gets fat yeah oh, he, he gets fat and then he <laughs> gets ripped and uh oh, yeah, yeah the, the stuff he did to get fat like that right like mm-hmm. uh he did he, just he had to work out quarantined <laughs> and eat like shit at the same time right like but like your body doesn't get he had fat. To get meaty. <laughs> yeah, but your body doesn't get fat in, in a comedic way like that, where he just had this huge gut and yeah. he was all centered in this one spot. He, wor- he worked. For right. It. He had to like work out his arms <laughs> and like work. He's so developing that all a dad the bod. fat like went to the right spot he that he wanted. He just developed a dad yeah, bod. He like intentionally did. It was fucking hilarious reading about how I he liked him that fat. Process. Yeah, he, I like when the guys little. He was have a little extra bloop, bloop on them. Oh yeah, and yeah. then getting ripped. Skinny's good too, but I like. Who doesn't like a dad bod? <laughs> Who doesn't like a dad bod? I thought try, Mac. Mac? Mac. Mac got hotter when he got fatter. But really? Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. Whatever. I just, yeah, I just want to make him a pot roast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just love that big old hairy belly. <laughs> Like it. <laughs> I couldn't believe he really did that. Like I was like, man, that's a killer fat suit, and it was like, that is not a fat suit. That dude is just committed to this thing, oh this gosh. comedy thing. The Santa Claus. He's so fucking smart. Like he, the, he really wrote this really cool thing. Like it goes all the way through itself. Like every episode turns into a thing. Oh, well, well, I will dedicate myself and rewatch. Dude, from the it's it's great to watch from the beginning. Cool. I feel like I have I feel like I'm at the point where I've seen everything that there is to see on. Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah. Even the stuff I don't want to see. 
I just fucking, uh, have you seen Midnight Gospel on Netflix? Oh my God. I just hap- so happen to like what I call a microdose of magical mushrooms. Uh, There's like two caps and two stems. Okay. So I was cruising and then I just saw it for, I knew like as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is going to be wonderful. So I was like hanging out with my roommate and she just came to smoke weed with me in my room. We're k- kicking in my room and I put it on and I was just like, this is fucking amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. It's the same artist from Adventure Time, right? Yeah, it's the artist from Adventure Time. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and it sounds like nonsense and mumbo jumbo, but I was like, everything made perfect sense to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I messed with it. Well, it's like, um, it's like podcasts with Duncan Trussell. Yeah. I don't know if you're you're familiar with Duncan Trussell. No, but I like, I don't know, I follow what they're saying and then... (laughs) My roommate was like, what the hell are you watching? Know, <laughs> she right? had no idea. And I was like, bro, stop yelling, A of all. Yeah. <laughs> B of all, I've had some mushrooms. <laughs> like, don't freak me out. <laughs> I'm going to watch my weird show. Like, Oh, it's definitely like the best thing to put on if you've taken a dose of any kind of I psychedelic. Just, I love that I didn't know that was how my day was going to go. I just like leaned over on my bed and opened this little drawer and I was like, oh. It was like an Alice in Wonderland moment. I yeah. was like, I could. I was like, yeah, my brain can uh, could level out a little bit today, right? And then or I'll whatever. Just... <laughs> I don't know how the day ended, guys. <laughs> right. Story. End. No. Um, microdosing is where it's at these days. I think when I was younger, I used to like to party, but now it's just like more therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Singing bowls and whatnot. I love that shit. Me too. I'm yeah. all about relaxing my mind. I don't want to be an agitated human. I like to keep my whole space just like peaceful yeah oh yeah and cruising yeah you yeah can, you can moderate the the energy around you pretty well if you focus your effort on it totally and i think that's so important to do like to take care of yourself like ritualistically mm-hmm. like to literally like nurture yourself and love yourself is so important like in little little things that you do every day you know like i've tried to just mindfulness i don't know if it's like we're in the 30s now so this yeah. is just where like what we start you start thinking about stuff like i don't know i don't want chaotic thoughts in my life anymore or like that you know what i mean like i don't know i really like to focus on the little things and be super duper present you know what i mean it, it's Absolutely. yeah we live in an anxious society i don't want my thoughts to get ever get carried away with me or yeah yeah Easy. and you and you bring up mindfulness and that's a big that's been a big part of my life lately is uh is focusing on my mindfulness and making sure that I am like here in the moment and, and paying attention, you know, I'll get lost in something and I'll have to take a break from it, like whatever the fuck I'm doing. Like I realized that, um, it happened the other day. I was, I was thinking about this moment, right. While I was editing the previous podcast and wow. I'm doing all these things and I'm scheduling shit and I'm just like in the fucking future lost and I'm like I start getting agitated but that doesn't because even matter. <laughs> I'm not collected, right? Yeah, yeah, none of it matters. It's not what's important right now. What's important right now is I do these fucking things, right? Well, and and then- also just keeping a calm state of mind was is what's more important than any of this shit, any of this work. Um and I've, I've been getting better at that where you you the like I said the mind it's uh, mindfulness, you know, where you you recognize what your mind is up to yeah. and Take a step back from it. Go, it's not, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. And we're going to do this process to get us focused again and, and bring it back to now. Yeah. Even like, um, the weed's got me. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> even if like that, po- that process is like just taking a walk. Well, yeah. Well, no, even how you were just saying like you're real focused like on what you were doing next week. Like I've tried like, I try not to make like. No matter how much I plan, I love planning. I've had all kinds of plans. I'm an idealist. I have a really firm idea of, like, how things should be. Yeah. But unfortunately, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I am not the ruler of this universe, I found. You know what I mean? So, like, I could go on planning and planning and planning and anxiously awaiting this future that I've made up in my head, essentially. And it'll never come, by the way. No. So, that's never going to be out. It's like, so if I take that time instead of anxiously awaiting what will be and, like, focusing on what is currently, like, little things. Guys, like, when I take a shower now, I, like, breathe in my my fancy spa face wash for, like, 30 seconds and I focus on how it makes my body feel and... All of those essential oils, how they flood my system. Like, if you are slow, there are better things to think about than future nonsense or past nonsense, things that don't matter. Like, yeah, yeah, the present's pretty lovely if you uh, zoom in on it a little bit. 
right? I always find uh-huh. um, uh, uh, another this, thing this I'll is do. A, the <laughs> I think it's from the uh, microdosing. I figured that one out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, breathe in, shower gel, 30 seconds. Singing bowls are on. Yeah. Shower meditation is the business. Water is so good for you. I love singing bowls. They are the they are We fantastic. keep bringing it up. I hope yeah. people Google it. Yeah. So, oh, Tibetan singing bowls are amazing. And, um, and, <laughs> and listening to them on a speaker is cool, but like being in the presence of an actual singing bowl. <laughs> my, uh, and, my stepmom has one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dude. It's a she's, whole different thing. She's far out. It's it's interesting, you know, and and you can comp- and I mean you fill those fucking things with water and watch that water, uh, take on this waveform it's of the bowl. It's just the Jurassic Park stomp guy. Yeah. yeah, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> is that what that feeling is? That's like kind of going through my body because your body's fucking made out of water. Your water, mm, and yeah. it's like your you're a waveform fluctuating as well with this bowl, and it's just like, oh fuck, man. Well, it's we're heavy like, stuff right, when I first started an getting into it, and. Yeah, you trip me out. Well, we're like an object in time space. So like everything yeah. that has our gravity is affected by everything, right? We're pulled and especially like we're water. Yeah. So we're goopy. It's so like our goop sloshing around depending on how much magnetic fields over here or how much is over there, right? Yeah. It's it's <laughs> that's how you should call it when you're feeling like the universe is tugging you. I'm feeling goopy. I'm all goopy. <laughs> I'm all goopy, guys. <laughs> that's what I feel like when I've taken too much acid. I'm all goopy. I can't take too much of that. Yeah. Any longer. No. No. When we met, I was like a champ. Now I'm just like, <laughs> I want to go home and watch Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I go, it's just too much. You know, I used yeah. to feel wonderful and wild and now I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. noticed I've um, uh, become more sensitive to it too. Like, uh, that's cool. Got, We've experienced it. I don't think you need to. It's like, that's yeah. where people get in trouble when they're like, I'm into the moon every yeah. night, you know? Like, yeah. And a lot. I know some kids that, yeah, that's where they're you, weird now. You lose, you lose <laughs> yourself a little bit, right? No, I know some kids that are weird now. Like, there's a point you can take it a yeah. little too far, you know? Like, by, by, by all means, experiment on your own. I support it. In a safe way with friends. <laughs> yeah. Definitely be safe. Definitely drink water. And definitely take it oh, a yeah, little hydrate. slow. Right? Like, oh, yeah. Ease into it. You don't got to fucking dive bomb into that motherfucker. Shh, There's always me. next week. You know, you can you could take it one hit at a time. <laughs> yeah. Because that shit will grab you, man. Mm. I, I remember I like in my said hydrate would, uh, and we're just like, ding. Yep, ding. right? Fucking water is so important. I love it's water. Everything. I love you? water. Yeah, some yeah. people. I go through like a five gallon every two days. I think my roommate was yeah. like, "Damn, you really love that stuff." That's yeah. yeah. It's mostly all I drink is water, uh, and uh, I'll have a ginger ale at night. Mm, if I have a hangover, I'll guilty drink a fizzy soda. Yeah. I mean, you know, hangover. That's all I like, drinking doesn't even sound fun anymore like you go out with your friends and then you're like oh i am deathly ill for a day and a half afterwards yeah yeah and like what the, i know you st- are you still not drinking yeah no i haven't, like had, I haven't had a drink 11 years <laughs> uh nine years i think good for you yeah, dude it's been a long i think time. i'm on that route i'm getting there dude it's great like uh, that's it's just a poison and the thing <laughs> well, is well, it's a it's just deathly poison yeah you know? <laughs> it's it's fucking uh yeah it's not good for you and it fucks you all up <laughs> I was just watching um, an episode of Joe Rogan. I fucking love Joe Rogan. I watch it all the time. Oh, He's okay. talking about uh, he had a he had um, a doctor on, and they were discussing the effects of alcohol, and as well as uh, you know, pro- you know, of course, psychedelics and stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is fucking the Joe Rogan podcast. So of course, he's talking about psychedelics. But uh, DMT stuff. Yeah, yeah. Though they were, they were, they were DMT yeah, yeah. was brought up <laughs> a lot. But uh, no, but so the the. But the point I was gonna, uh, after is um, he's discussing hangovers. And when you drink a lot of alcohol, you know, you wake up and you're hungover. And they were like, well, what's actually happening is that you instantly become addicted to alcohol. It's like so addicting mm-hmm. that the hangover is um, like physical withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> In one night, right? Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, it destroyed me and gave me a headache or whatever. Yeah. And it fucked me up or whatever. You know, like, you know, it's, I get, it's like, like it's Ill, poison. Ill. Right. Yeah. You get really ill, really sick, right? Yeah. Bad. Like, I'll be like Ill for hours, like, <clears throat> vomiting. And if you have a yeah. beer, That's why it's it not goes fun. away instantly. No, I'm unfortunately not one of those people. Yeah. Like, if I've had enough, I've had enough. Yeah. And like, the next day, some people are like, here's a dog. And I'm like, I will murder yeah. you. I'm going to eat ice chips. 
and like I'm not moving from yeah. this position. You know what I mean? And like I need pot and ice chips basically. But no, I can't hair at the dog. It yeah. it doesn't help. I will get even more sick. I think. Oh really? So I know people that swear by it. Yeah, that's what I would always do. I was always a hair of the dog kind of guy, Ooh. and uh, it, uh, it 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 worked instantly. Right, but then it's like. But well, then you gotta start the party again. You gotta start the party again. See, because you're that's gonna not go fun through, anymore. Because what's happening is when the fun stops, you're going through physical withdrawal symptoms of an addiction that happens instantaneously from this p- incredibly powerful poison that you're putting in your body. I think that, like, as you get like, as I'm getting older, you just realize more and more what it's doing to you, how it makes you feel. It's not as fun. I like, I, I was in Austin this weekend. Uh huh. <laughs> And like I'm, everyone's like the bars are open. I'm like that's sweet, but like I'm not drinking for a few days. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm good, guys. I'll see you with NFU. Like um, Austin was super fun. No one yeah. was afraid of anything out there. Texas is. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. I love Texas. It was a, like a an electric storm. We were raging like on Sixth Street. That's awesome. Nothing's supposed to be open. <laughs> we're like in the bars. It was tight. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, if Texas don't give a fuck. Yeah. They just go fuck everybody. It's nice down there. I've never been. I've heard a lot of nice things. Like, yeah. things were closed, but I still got to eat Austin barbecue. And, uh, uh, nice. Ugh. Yeah, we were out. <laughs> like, at the chills. Um, I drank tequila, which I don't usually do. I still regret it. <laughs> <laughs> tequila was always my worst one. When I was drinking, it was, uh, that was the first one that went where i was like i'm not allowed to drink mm-hmm. fucking tequila oh, i anymore. guess i get weird on that you, uh, get weird. you turn into weird guy reason, no i turned into violent guy oh like no. i was the nicest dude everybody when i quit drinking for real um everybody's bummed they were just like oh man you're just like fuck a party animal right like i would just have a good time i was never really you know a problem or anything like that or get into trouble <laughs> i would just drink a lot right but like if i drank fucking tequila i was fighting someone and I don't know what the fuck that was, but it was like tequila made me fucking fight. Uh, and that got cut off <laughs> I used real to just, fast. My trouble was like, I used to just think that I needed how many drinks most people have throughout the whole night, like just to get myself out the door. I was like oh, anxious. Yeah. I didn't realize I was having anxiety. I was like, I didn't want to go be around all those huge groups of people, you know? So I was like, yeah. I was getting hammer time. You're not supposed to be like, everyone feels the same. We all grow there together. And then you're like, oh. Yeah. I feel like I'm like, I'm tired now guys <laughs> no what fixes that is taking a, a bunch of acid and going to the same place where you're anxious as fuck to be around all those people oh, and then no. you're just like oh no but then you spend way. the night and then you go you what up. the fuck was i so anxious about and you're like i can go to fucking huge crowds full of people are you now. microdosing like see now i feel opposite i feel really overwhelmed yeah. on the acid well yeah that's what happens you you get this like overwhelming experience right uh. that you think in your oh, head, okay. you're like, I'm not going to be able to fucking handle this. But you this do. is going to be too much. And then, but then you come out of the other side and you're just like, uh, uh, what happened all this? Are you like, what, are what, you, I was supposed to get into trouble. Are I'm you doing like, a scientific microdose? Are you doing a practice? Are you like, what are you following a regimen? Or uh, tell me more about this. Oh, uh, well, I um, am just a fucking uh, maniac, honestly. Like, I like to take <laughs> large doses of psychedelics and go into deep ass fucking rabbit holes like and listen to Tibetan bulls and fucking meditate and shit yeah yeah like yeah. um i like some psychedelic yeah, music um no it's um it's been it's a different thing for me um than a party thing anymore right it's like, a personal experience it's a personal experience a heavy totally. experience so no yeah like well, that's I'll, what i'm saying i I'll wouldn't want to go do it in front of people <laughs> yeah yeah um i mean i'll go do it if, if we're going to a concert or something right and it's like fucking Pr- like primos it's Primus. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're going to see Primus. I oh, went yeah. and saw Primus. Oh, yeah. Tripping balls before. Yeah. I, I was in, in the backstage with like Cles. What's his name? Cles Claypool. Cles Claypool. Cles Claypool. Cles Claypool. I was backstage with him, and I was like, "Why are these guys dressed like scarecrows?" <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking shit. It was awesome. <laughs> Fucking. Uh, I didn't know. I'm not into Primus. I know yeah. you love them. Oh yeah. I was like, I've. Wa- I think I've been at Primus with you, and I was like, I'm going to Pink Taco. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm, I drank. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I went to drink chocolate milk because I was just like, this is just Willy Wonka music. Yeah. I know people it was are literally. Really, really wonka music People that was uh, that was probably the, the chocolate Guys factory gonna, tour it's boy music i it's, appreciate it yeah. enjoy it yourself yeah. i'm gonna go totally i don't like it in my ears you can have it there's more we, for you now yeah <laughs> we had that uh and then um 
Jeff uh, from Blue Man Group, he hit us up, right? Like, he's hanging out with Tim Alexander. Jeff who's in fuck, Yeah, so he's hanging out with... Uh, he's a babe. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. You do, uh, you, stop. We won't talk about We won't it. talk about He's Satora. a babe of Las Vegas. Let's give him one shout out. He is a very handsome man. Okay. Jeff, you sexy little bitch. Don't let it go to his little head. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, but uh, no, I love Jeff to death. And, uh, especially very for this talented moment. and so, so fun. I'm hanging out with my Primus tribute band, right? That mm-hmm. we, you know, we're just I've like, yeah. And we're, um, we're tripping balls at a Primus concert, like fucking love and life because we spent all this time learning how to play these songs. And it is great. Like, I think you go it's more fun to watch, watch you play, play that it. because I know, and People you guys are. Say that a lot. For me, it's more fun to watch yeah. you guys. I know you guys. I don't have like the connection to it that like a lot of people do. Yeah. So. I was like, oh, those are my friends. I got pig right. heads on. This is exciting. I like. Yeah. yeah, it's a little. It's not your normal. It's not the normal show that gets put on. Exactly. The 80s rock show that everybody tries to fucking recreate. <laughs> yeah. Out here in Las Vegas. <laughs> Are we okay? <laughs> Are we gonna do that? She's like, ah! Did you just say that? Yeah, I didn't just say that. It's no. okay. You can get it out. It's true though. It's like, oh, come on, man. The '80s happened a long time ago. But uh, no, so so Totora, uh, so Totora calls me up and he goes, "Are you at the fucking Primus concert?" And I was just like, "Of course, I'm at the fucking Primus concert. Where else would I be if Primus is playing in Las Vegas?" And he goes, "Cool." Meet me the next day. Sounds like a dream I had. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, just uh, kidding. <laughs> and so, yeah, so he calls us backstage, right? And we're just like, ah, oh, fuck, here we go. So, like, <laughs> like we're going to go meet uh, the band, and uh, and we're fucking coming down off of, I think it was Mushrooms. Yeah, it was Mushrooms. <laughs> and uh, so we're coming down off the Mushrooms, right? Like, uh, and we're walking backstage to go meet the fucking band, and we hang out in this fucking room. And so they left us in like this room with all these people that like paid money to come meet the band, right? And we're oh no. And I was just like, oh shit! Like I thought we, we fan, were fanboying. I thought we were actually going to the green room to kick it or whatever. Oh, but it's a meet and greet. And it was like he was just brought us the meet and greet, but he was yeah. just like, it doesn't matter. You know, I was like, fucking cool. Uh, and uh, and uh, and then he brings Primus in, and <laughs> immediately goes hey guys come here i want you to meet my <laughs> friends who are all tripping on balls are all tripping balls and uh we're tripping on balls yeah tripping <laughs> on balls right uh nice. no we're all we're all sitting there fucking you know like fucking mushrooms are fucking coming on we're like okay we're, we're, we're meeting primus now and uh <laughs> and he goes they have a tribute to your band oh groovy and i was just like oh dude don't fucking tell them that oh you no know? Like, we're just like, oh, we're on he was the like spot <laughs> now yeah, they're just. What like, did he roll his eyes at you? So was he nice? The best thing about that, right? He goes so. <laughs> I've seen people meet right? him and freak out, oh, and yeah. the poor guy is just like, I because people love the guy. They like, oh, but yeah. I've seen people just get fidgety and weird and like talk too much in front of him, and he's just like, okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, poor yeah. dude. I mean, I like I said, I would never want to be famous. That's yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to crazy. deal with. I mean, we've been we deal with famous people a lot. And, and, well, I, I mean, I've been doing my whole fucking life, but uh, yeah, it's it's like that's a that that position of like being the product and everybody's after you. That's right. it's a lot to deal with. It's a heavy psychological. Heavy lies load. the crown. So um, <laughs> so yeah, so. Th- fucking Primus sitting across from us we're fucking like kind of kicking our feet into the ground like oh is this really happening or is this just like part of the mushroom no I'm just kidding we know that this is really yeah. happening we've been doing mushrooms our whole fucking lives uh, so uh, they go yeah you got, uh, so you gotta you gotta attribute to Primus that's how not how did it feel to tell it like for him to know that in front of it, you how are you feeling Um, like totally embarrassed as shit right like yeah. cause like oh, we're like fuck man these guys are like for us he you know, I you know, heroes and shit. Like I, I fucking. It takes a lot of time to learn how to play like that, and then um, there they are right in front of you, and now he knows you've spent yeah, all this time. They like, probably present. like are like dope. They were like, yeah, that's that was the reaction, so, right? Yeah, like, the reaction <laughs> that's was awesome. like, that's pretty cool. And then he goes, "You guys any good?" Uh, uh, I love it. <laughs> I said, oh, and of course, I, and I was just like, uh, "Of course, you said yes." No, no, I said no. We we suck. You know, if that's the Primus fucking... Oh, the Primus way. The Primus thing is uh, Primus sucks. Primus sucks. I was like, no, we fucking suck. At least they know it. And then they were just like, (laughs) ah, that's great. And then that's the end of the interaction, of course, and they go and hang out with the other people. And uh, and we were just kicking it with Jeff. Like, oh, 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 you know, yeah. thanks for bringing us in kind of fucking bullshit. But it was, uh, I think that I, was always so fun. I think someone played Primus for me, and I was like, this sounds like the beginning of South Park. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, uh. It is. It is, right. So I was like, so just, okay. 
Yeah. Which album is that on? <laughs> it's actually um, that song is. Uh, I don't really want to know, Jason. No, no, I'm just kidding. Don't go through your brain files on me on this one. <laughs> no, when they bring in, uh, they they made the uh, the second intro where they go. Oh, that one. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like every song. Yeah, that crazy ass shit. That's Wambola. That's from uh, the Purple Onion album. That's a fucking great song, you know. And he does it, and it's actually called Wambola because he has See, this instrument. Is how I miss fans do. Yeah, and like right? I have no interest, and then he just goes on. He's on like Blast the best. You with on, it. I get to have. I get to hear a mouth version of yeah. the greatest Primus solo ever. Right <laughs> on <It's> airbase. <laughs> fucking mouth beating. Musicians are the funnest. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that's uh, the thing. He know he has a wham. I'll tell you anyways. I was gonna stop. I want to tell you anyways. See, we're on a podcast. I'm supposed That's to talk. That's fine. So he's a, uh, he's he's got this big fucking stick that a fan made him, and, mm -hmm. and he tightens the string by pulling down a lever, loosening up the lever, and he goes. Yeah, oh, I've seen this. That's the uh, that's the South Park thing. I do like the production value at their shows. Yeah, those are some big old giant mushrooms they had. Oh yeah, yeah. What's your so um? What's your vibe? Like, what is, uh, if you're going to take fucking some mushrooms or acid and go enjoy a, a nice concert? Um, I don't really, I have a confession, I don't really go to concerts anymore. What the fuck happened? I love music. I love music. I just can't be like, the crowds freak me out. I get really like, it's hard for me to, and like, live music, y'all, yeah. like, <laughs> I don't know. And in like the city, maybe if I was like out of town or something, I don't know. I really like to sit at home and listen to music, and I have albums I, I'll listen to. I love the internet for my the access to different sorts of music. I like to go down like a not even a playlist rabbit hole, but I'll start a vibe, yeah, and then just kind of see where it takes me, I guess. But really mellow. I don't like to ever be over stimulated by music. Like it has to be something if I'm tripping. Yeah. That makes me feel good in the background, but that doesn't make me provoke an emotion any which way. Oh. I'm not trying to get all into my feels. You know what I mean? Like, I like, I don't know. I listen to, like, Minus the Bear when I, try, like, it's one of my favorite bands to trip out and listen to. If you have not heard of them, they're, like, they're really mellow, but, like, good. it's rock and roll music. I don't know. They got a whole vibe of their own, and, like, it, they never make me feel happy or sad. Like, they can just be on, and I don't get that, like... I don't know. I also don't DJ music for people. Like, if people are like, oh, it's your turn with the ox. I'm like, I don't want to be in charge of how everyone in this car feels. Yeah. I'll start getting anxious and switching songs really fast, you know? Like, it's a lot of responsibility. But I can chill out and be cool with, like, whatever you have on. Yeah. Yeah. Down for whatever, up for anything. Like, music for me is a private experience. No shit. Yeah. You used to fucking be the party animal. I like, know. I can't believe you say you're not going to concerts anymore. You were, like, going right. to concert every single goddamn night. Well, I worked at a concert. Well, you did work at a concert. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I worked at a. Yeah. It does get old after working at a place for a little while, though. That that can. That's definitely a fucking fact. Yeah, it's just like a lot of high energy for like hours. I guess I don't know. I'm very affected by music. I don't. It messes with my. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I'll say that, but I'm sure if I'm not saying I'll never go to a concert again. I guess like the most recent I went to like Life is Beautiful and okay. also it's like after the Harvest shooting I was like this is sketch balls I don't really want to be like out here like you know what I mean like yeah. fanned out under these I don't know my friend wanted to go into one of the little tunnel things to watch one of the shows and I was like here there's no way you're getting me in there like I get all claustrophobic yeah that's what it is I think it's the crowds so I don't like like the pushing and shoving and touching yeah rubbing shoulders that's funny. With the I, common folk. I <laughs> fucking love that part. I, I love don't. it so much. Yeah, I like yeah. to just get into the middle of it all, and like. Uh, when I was younger, I would like scramble my way to the front, like at shows. Oh, yeah. oh, I wanted to be like in the pit, and like I wanted to be like involved, like have, like I I loved it, you know. And I was little, I used to be like, I want to like crowd surf, and as I get older, I just like f get further and further away from social interaction. I guess. <laughs> Is this normal? I, I guess so, yeah. I mean, yeah, you I'm probably not drawn to... <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely not interested in going out and fucking raging all the time. That's for sure. It's like every once in a while, let's go see, you know, there's, there's, a, other good, cool there's stuff a good concert do. going on. Let's go see some music, you know what I mean? It's not the same experience that it was Oh, my God. Okay, I have, one, I have do ever, I got invited to Eric Clapton this year. Okay. Oh, my God. I woke up, you guys, with 
um, <laughs> I had strep throat and I woke up and my whole eyeball had like, I guess I coughed in my sleep uh -huh. and my whole eyeball had shattered. It was like red, the, the blood vessels, I guess, uh -huh. which is something that happens with strep. I guess it's common. You cough in your sleep and blah, bloop. So I had gone to the, like, what is the quick care or whatever? Urgent care. Yeah. Urgent care. And they're like, yep, yeah, you have strep, which is gross. That sucks. But, um, this guy had invited me to Clapton and I had to say no because I was like, A of all, I look like I have the rage virus. Like I'm about to start a zombie apocalypse yeah. and like I can't go with strep. That's like, that's probably how coronavirus started. <laughs> that's it from, from the Eric Clapton concert. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fucking coronavirus started because of CES out here. That's for sure. One of them. Everybody was fucking sick at that thing. Ew, I, it was gross. It was just like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? Everything yeah. is still really gross, by the way. Like I said, I just traveled and like I flew Allegiant, which is a nightmare. It was like 63 bucks round trip, though, if you guys <laughs> trying to get out of here. Um, Allegiant's good on them cheap flights. Yeah, I like, I mean, like you should sanitize your area anyway and like wash your hands. That's pretty common. But like they were attempting social distance, except for when we got on the plane, they pushed, like boarded everyone in the back of the plane together. And there was all these empty streets, and I was like, this feels like pandemic-y. I don't know. This is odd. Like, And then they made us deep plane and get back on. It's just a weird, I don't know if that's just the Allegiant way, where this is just like, maybe they were like, um, I don't, it was a weird travel experience, but no one was like ill-seeming or under panic under any of the places. That I, yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It seems like... Um it seems like the quarantining, like, did its fucking job. Well, good. But, you know? I, good. I feel like uh, everybody, you know, some terrible fucking wave of a virus was upon us, and everybody fucking retreated to their households, and it kind of hit us a little bit, and we I wear a mask it. if I go to the grocery store or something for, like, like they say, like, oh, I'm not ill. Yeah. I worked in a rock and roll club. Yeah. Like I said earlier, like, I was like, I probably... Have had a coronavirus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I fucking definitely have. It. <laughs> Ew. Uh, like, no, nah, we, it's it, fucking CES 2020. In the middle we live of in January. Las Vegas. It's like Germ Central. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a peopley place, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what CES was. I mean, CES is just a fucking electronic show. Right? Electronic show. So there's like so many fucking people. There's an entire floor that's just like, all these random Chinese companies, right? Yeah. And like just, just fucking everybody is from everywhere around the world. And they all flew in right as this coronavirus is <laughs> starting to like turn into a thing. It's like the whole world flew into Vegas and then we're all in the center of it. We have an Airbnb everybody room at my house. Sick. And like it was crazy to see. Like the when it very first started, like we had a guest staying for one of the conventions and I'm just like Make sure that dude stays on that side of the locked house. <laughs> like, I'm not messing with these strange germs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, I don't know. Do I? Do you know anybody who has coronavirus? Uh, I know, I know people who are related to someone. Are related to someone who has coronavirus. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know someone who's who's dad. So yeah, I do know. Yeah. I know their dad personally, honestly. So yeah, I do know someone who has coronavirus. They're in the hospital. I knew someone from coronavirus. I knew someone who's they didn't go to the hospital, or they went and then they sent him home. I guess. Yeah. But like the wife is my neighbor's, <laughs> my neighbor's like best friend. So she'd come like smoke on the street, and I was like, oh, I think I asked for a cup of ice or something. And I was like, actually, <laughs> on second thought, and she's like girl, you can come in my home. And I was like, no, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had it, I guess. He was just laid up. They had him in a, in a separate room. Yeah. It's just like, what are you going to do? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a bug. Uh, you got to get it or you got to get some kind of immunity booster for it. Right. Like, I mean, this, it's just a bug. You, you're going to get sick. You Wash get sick your in hands. Life. Wash your fucking hands. Wash your hands. I mean, People yeah. are gross. I think that, yeah, it's good that, I think they had this reminder. I think people, it's the best thing. <laughs> people are gross. Like doorknobs are fucking disgusting, right? Oh, I like it. karate it, kick mine. It is uh <laughs> it, it, like the whole world was this gross like t 
time bomb of like microbes on door handles and fucking all over the place that I just it grosses me out. I did, you know, like I, I'm a crazy person. So it uh, <laughs> like I think about it all the time. You know, I'm just like anytime I touch a doorknob, I'm just like I just grab fucking 25 people's boogers and un- Ew, you know, shitty uh, hands that they fucking wiped their ass with and didn't wash their fucking hands. Mm, I want to hear something really yummy. And that's what's on doorknobs, right? Like, and I just accept <laughs> that. I go through life and just go, your hand's not gonna fucking fall off, bro. You can wash your hand I in like a little it. while. I love that they clean all the doorknobs. Constantly knobs. now. It's so great for me. Yeah. It's so great for me. I, I'm thoughtful always of cross-contamination as well. Like, I'm very, like, aware of other people. I don't, I'm yeah. not even big on touching. Like, I, I don't know, like, yeah, yeah. like, some people are touchers, like, like, shoulder grabbers, or, like, they just like to, like, get all up on you. And, like, yeah. I don't, I think I should have some personal space anyway. So, this is, like... A positive thing. I, I think so. It's like um, <laughs> we should be more aware <laughs> of our. People did. I'm like, this is a positive thing. Yeah, we, it's <laughs> it's we should, not. We should keep fucking you know proper distances with certain things like that. My dad was fucking uh, hilarious with it, right? So we're out. Uh, we're out getting supplies. Oh, your dad's so fun. He's great, right? Uh, He's really nice. So we're out getting supplies, and um, everybody's like, uh, it was like the beginning, right? So let like, me see, Blake. Blake. Bam. That's right. You know it. Uh, so yeah, he's uh, we're we're out getting gear and uh, and there's already markers out. Stay six feet away from each other. Curbside. The whole fucking nine's going on, right? And my dad's talking to people and he's just fucking touching them and grabbing them. Oh and God, he's just clueless. <laughs> yeah, you know. And he's like shaking our hand. We're going away. I'm dragging him away. He's like, sure. He's like insisting on a handshake. And I'm like, oh Dad, God. stop fucking touching people, man. And he goes, What? And I was like, Dude, there's a fucking virus. Like, <laughs> he's just oblivious. I was like, Do you see? Everybody's standing six feet apart. I was like, is, What you're doing is like super uncomfortable for these oh people and they're trying not to be rude to you you know and he's just like ah oh, i guess and i just like just stop touching people no. come on let's go motherfucker the other day my roommate and i rode our bikes up the strip as as so many are doing it and i recommend it. there's no other time that you can and the cops don't give a shit there's kids down there skateboarding like but we're on the road and like we woke up like 7 a.m and we're like let's just go like before the bikes get running and we're driving by, and we see Denny's is open. Like, we even eat at a restaurant. We're like, we're on these rented big ass bikes, and we're like, hell yeah, we'll eat at Denny's. So, like, we pull up and uh, insist on parking our bikes inside of their clean ass Denny's. And uh, <laughs> it's weird as hell. Every table's like wrapped, every other table's wrapped up in plastic. And we sit down, and um, my roommate, she's like one of those oblivious people sometimes, but hilarious. So she. <laughs> She's sweating balls. She is just like exhausted. She's probably like had a couple drinks on this bike ride, whatever. And she's like, is this disposable about the menu that she has, paper menu? And the lady's like, yes. And she's like, oh, good. And goes and starts rubbing it all over her face for some reason. <laughs> like uh, beyond me. And this lady's just horrified. And my roommate has no clue what she's done. Like, and I was like, girl, I was like, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. And you just put your germs she put it like on her face and just sets it on the tray and i'm just like i can't believe i'm in public with you right now like yeah there's our yeah the oblivious germ thing so it just makes you think of who before didn't think of like cross-contamination at all this is people these are people we know yeah (laughs) people don't wash their fucking hands man i I couldn't believe that she rubbed it on her face yeah it's fucking crazy right like ah i i I mean, that information is, like, available to people, right? <laughs> like, you know that there's just fucking germs all over everything, right? Like, I just, like, the, the nerve. I don't even know, like, in my head when people do stuff, like, like, do they know and they just don't give a shit? Or do they just not know? I just don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't I, know. I, to me, I think uh, it, I, I just rationalize it as they just don't think about it. It doesn't cross their mind as a thing <laughs> that is happening, right? Like, it's just like, I can't fucking see all those little bugs, it's so they're not house. there. That's some <laughs> bullshit the government just fucking tells people. I ain't buying sure. a microscope. I was really stoned one night, and I, I posted on my Facebook, I was like, what if um, forensics just uh, propaganda to keep us from killing each other? <laughs> like, the like germ, we like, can tell. They can't really zoom in on this shit. <laughs> like, they can't tell your hairs from whose hairs, you know what I mean? But right. it keeps us all in check. Like It's the illusion. <laughs> yeah. Like, the illusion I don't, of power. I know. I know a couple scientists. It ruins the fun when you're friends with a scientist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's been, uh, <laughs> that's been our game lately. I, 
I really want a, uh, a high power microscope mm, and oh, I really like want electron. a high power telescope. And they're both like around a thousand bucks or whatever that I can get um, and start doing the stuff at the house because like, uh, so we'll be outside and like, uh, a I, have a con- I know Ven- where you can Venus get is I have right a, there, right? Like, I have a telescope for yeah, you. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But it's I'll- in a garage that you know. Oh, really? That's so nice. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> oh, I love you, too. Uh, dude. Because it drives me nuts, right? I'm like, oh, check it out. Fucking Venus right there. They're just like, that's a fucking star, idiot. And I just say, oh, brain aneurysm. And I just go, no, no that's a planet, right? Yeah. That's, that's why you could see it before the sky's even dark, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and they just go, that's not how it fucking works. Go out to the and, Valley of Fire with your telescope once you get yeah, it. Yeah, like, there, it's just beautiful. When I, My mom always took us to, for meteor showers and stuff out here, like the Persis Leonids, all those, like, um, November. Or they're really, we, just, we just had, like, a meteor shower, I think, right? Yeah, we did. Lane, I missed it. I, I totally don't know. fucking missed it. Um, we, planned for, we planned to go, and then, like, life kind of goes... Ooh, yep. in front of your face. Well, and now the like, Valley oh, wait, of Fire, as soon as it reopens, go look at some stars out there because it's just it. gorgeous. Yeah, there's so much stuff. Like, once you get outside the light pollution, even 45 minutes outside of Vegas, like, yeah. beautiful sky sky looking. <laughs> we used to uh, drive out to uh, Death Valley. Looking? And uh, uh, what was it? Tyler had, uh, Tyler had some uh, the fucking connection with a uh, hot springs out there or some shit, right? Yeah. So we would go out there and shoot like desert stuff for music videos. If you take uh, glow sticks and crack them, make sure you bring them with you when you leave. But you crack them at night and put them in the hot spring. Ah, uh, that's a good idea. And it's like, yeah. mm, sensual. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but dude, it's like so fucking dark out there. I love it. When we're driving, anytime we're going back and forth between you there, I'm always sticks. like, we're stopping. <laughs> I'm rolling a joint. We're looking at the fucking stars yeah. in the middle of the freeway where the I just get like scared nothing. of gargoyles. Of gargoyles? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. Where does that come from? I'm <laughs> like the early 90s gargoyle show. The and cartoon? Me- no, there was like a movie, I think, that was like scarier than that. Okay. Somewhere between my fear of Danny DeVito's The Penguin and uh, Gargoyles. The Penguin. Huh? Those were the main, like, my nightmares as a kid. Danny like, DeVito's penguin was fucking creepy as hell. It was terrifying. All that shit that was like juicing out of his Ew, mouth and shit all the time. It's, it's just, just like, ah, oh, god damn Ew, it. And then when he's like eating the fish. Yeah, like, when he's eating the fish. <laughs> ah! This shit's fucking hilarious. That's so gross. I loved those early 90s Batmans. Those are so good, right? Yeah. yeah. Val Kilmer was probably one of my, Arnold. Val Kilmer's mouth was probably one of my first loves. <laughs> When he played Morrison, I love that. Is that, that the so age much, you're at? Right? Where you're like, that's a, that's a pretty mouth. That's a pretty mouth. <laughs> you got there, Batman. I was like, four. <laughs> <laughs> four. And then the came out. Yeah, those are fucking awesome. I loved all the original Batmans. Do I have a weird shadow? I the like remakes were really good, but, uh, or, well, I guess the, the I guess it's not even like a remake, right? It's like a whole different, like they're, they're, they're going to do it so many different times, but yeah. Yeah. I just try to appreciate them all as different. Yeah. When it was cheesy and it wasn't <laughs> serious, right? Oh, I love the original, like the, um, who is this? Goddamn. Adam West ones, of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's shark spray. <laughs> Those are beautiful. Love them. Beautifully done. That's just like a different time. It was a simpler time. <laughs> it really was, right? Like they just, uh, they go, we got these fucking boxes. People can see <laughs> pictures on them. What do we do now? Yeah, right? And that's like, all you're saying, like learning technology. Like this is what they are. And that was like the cream of the creme de la creme. Yeah. So someone was still learning, you know, like. Yeah, it's just the, it's a growing process, right? It's, and it's like you can't go backwards. You can't go back to like uh, fucking sitcoms, right? The th- people keep trying to bring that format back, and it's I like, hate. is that working for I, anybody? It never was funny I, without and I, I just today like um, my roommate was watching some of the laugh track, and I was yeah. like, pathetic. Exactly, <laughs> right? That's I'm exactly. I'm just judging it. people. I'm like, look, they're just laughing as other people have nothing going on. It's funny, like it's just, and the deliveries. I don't know. I can talk a lot of shit. Talk? I, dude. It's, it's <laughs> I don't sick, like... Ugh. The it's sitcom painful. format's fucking terrible. I mean, that was like... It was a thing when it was a thing, and... It has a, a date stamp on it. Yeah, it kind of... It kind, it comes at you a certain... And, and, like, people don't... That guy, they just go, I guess this is what TV is, right? Until someone does Until it better. Until they die? It's yeah. the people who just watch the same shit over and over and over again. You know yeah. what I mean? Like... And then all of a sudden people go, oh, wait, this is what fucking television can be. This is what these shows can be. And then you can't just go back to that format. There's so many different, like, okay, there are so many different crafts. And I respect, like, 
everything that you're doing here like that's a this is a art form you know what i mean like everything you have to respect every way that people are expressing some people want to make shitty sitcoms it's true <laughs> some people too. live for a shitty sitcom who are we to just say that it sucks because it's it sucks Cause so it sucks. damn bad <laughs> <laughs> they could definitely, you know, I'm definitely not trying to say that they uh, they should be able to make them. I'm, uh, no, but, but maybe they should. They, they, can, we <laughs> can we can we start working on that, right? Like, Hold on a second. Wait a this, second. Let's pump the brakes. Fucking let's abortion go back to this. bullshit <laughs> to and the these side. psychedelic drug fucking legal arguments off to the side for you a second. You can have your abortions. And let's fucking make it illegal to fucking make sitcoms. I would say keep abortions and get rid of sitcoms. Yes. I I like that. I, let's go with that <laughs> for a little while, right? Yeah. Let's let let people Perfect. do what they want with their bodies, and also stop making fucking terrible sitcoms because nobody's gonna watch them. And that shit let's is fucking. Get rid horrible. of the laugh track while we're at it. God damn! Can you come up with a new idea? Like, <laughs> um, I've seen lots of them. I like the way that I don't know. I like I in this time. I don't know. I I watch a lot of television. And I never used to do that. Like, I never would just sit at home. You know what I mean? Or I would just occupy my time differently, I guess. But I put it on more, like, as a background. Yeah. As I do other things. Yeah. Yeah. But I like to, I don't like to kind of, I'm ADD. I can't sit there and zoom into something. And the stuff that you have to really commit to, like, American, uh, what's. The American that, Horror Story? No, the house on Haunted Hill. The Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House amazing but like i had to watch it all in a row and during daylight hours because <laughs> 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 that's just too scary for me um but like speaking of like different kinds of like tv shows that one's filmed it seems like by a different i think it's a different director every time and then one of the episodes when they get in i didn't like it yeah but i can respect what they did it was all shot in one take so as oh. something's happening behind them this is a whole like hour-long show um as something's happening one of them and I think that it was also imp improvised the way that they're talking to each other it's these characters who have developed over six or seven long episodes now and um, like there's ep things happening like at this coffin and then as they move around the room another person's talking there's another interaction and then behind there's a person breaking down that set so they can go back to a flashback of like this other like of that same spot it's weird it's like I think it needed some f some work but i really appreciate what they did with it you know what i mean i didn't like the improv of um i think it was maybe their what they were saying which is that the, it was clearly not scripted i guess yeah and everything else was so beautifully done in that in that but it was experimental and cool and if you haven't seen it i highly now i'm interested actually it's dope the whole it's terrifying like there's lots of jump scares and i guess it has like easter eggs throughout the entire show where it'll be broad daylight and like the mom's talking or something and you don't realize but there's like demon feet under a teep, um, under a table but during broad lay daylight ghosts and windows you don't realize like lots of jump scares which i'm not usually crazy about but very well done um it's scary as hell bent neck lady you have to yeah oh yeah it's a good 12 hours of like daylight vegging out Daylight Never want to waste out. a whole day. <laughs> That's all we got. For. Just days to waste, right? I get, I get too scared at night. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, I like a good horror movie. Fucking Angela loves the horror movie genre. I, I'm just getting into horror movies, like as of two years ago. Yeah, like starting like two summers ago, I started watching like a, a little at a time. I'm so afraid of gore, and I'm, I'm super creative in my head. So whatever I think is gonna happen is not nearly like they don't do anything nearly as bad as what i had planned like you oh, know what yeah. I, oh yeah i'm like oh my god this is gonna be and then the music you know how i said i'm affected by music easily yeah i hate horror movie music it gives me <laughs> terrible anxiety you know what i mean i'm like Turn, to. mute this shit but <laughs> put on the subtitles and mute it or i'll go stand in the hallway like a weirdo oh, yeah. and watch it oh yeah i'll stand up because i'm like <laughs> i'm terrified i think is what it is um oh, that's so great it's, it's the working. anxiety it's it built uh, yeah yeah some of them i really like um the ghost shit. I really like ghost shit. Okay. Yeah, I don't like slasher anything. I don't want to see humans like get cut up. No, I don't like the sound effects. It's the sounds. It's my sounds that's are the great. ASMR I don't like people getting gooshed. Yeah, <laughs> those gooey sounds and stuff like that. I love that kind it's of disgusting. shit. The foley and stuff. It messes with me. That and like sword sounds. If someone's gonna get sliced. Oh And yeah. there's a preemptive sword sure. sound. Ooh, it sent a shiver through my spine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I walked out of Alien versus Predator because the sword sounds were giving me anxiety. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sensitive. So 
<laughs> that movie's like not scary. Yeah, I was that's terrified. An action movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is before I smoked pot. That movie came out too. So, oh my god, that's so funny. This made my natural state. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on a little um, feature length movie that I want to fucking put together, but it's yeah. going to be pretty cheesy. But have some really good slasher gory stuff really? in it that I want. Do you know Day? Do, remember Day Green? She works in yeah, uh, B horror films. Of course, I remember Day. You should link up with her, dude. She's so fun. I followed her on Instagram. Yeah, and. She did like a <laughs> whole like poopy monster movie, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like. So great. Oh yeah, like she's, you know, she's gnarly. I like her. Yeah, we're gonna do some. Um, we're 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 writing some smaller like sketch things, and mm-hmm. we're trying to like put together a small show. I want to work with you on that. I love to yes. do. Yes. Yeah, I've worked on like some. Um, I think you're hilarious. Film festival stuff, uh-huh. and then um, I've done a couple television shows, but yeah, I don't tell people. Yeah. It's just fine. It's for the process. Yeah. Process driven creation, you guys. I don't like to ever look at myself, but I love like the process. It's fun. I love that as well. Uh that's that's what I like about this fucking whole podcast thing. It's a great like flow that we got going. With yeah. It, you know? Um, and I really hope it starts. I mean, if this fucking thing turns into a paying gig People doing the podcast, love podcasts. I would I would just be People love so them. thankful. They like to sit to around here or other living. people bullshit. Yeah, and it's I love doing it. I love I love catching up with my friends, and I love having these real conversations. Yeah, and uh, with people where we're just we have time to just talk about whatever the fuck we come up with, right? Like you get to catch up with your friends and like have the, the whole Facebook communication thing is garbage. The whole like day to day um interaction exhausting is, it's exhausting <laughs> right like eh, it um, doesn't really fit my disposition so much anymore <laughs> yeah like yeah i was noticing it happening with my uh with my brother even right so like I think my whole life it's my fucking brother right and it's like work would get so fucking in the way and then um you know we're just like communicating basically through little text messages here and there and it's like then when we see each other it's maybe like at a social function but like then you're at a social function and your family chilling you don't get to have a real conversation right yeah you you have this these like catch-ups and it's like three minutes five minutes and then it's kind of awkward for a second so now i'm gonna go talk to this person and um that's my that's been my favorite part about this is this whole like getting to have a real fucking conversation with somebody uninterrupted and we're not watching TV or uh, doing Reconnecting any of that stuff. And you're handpicking who you want to see and spend your time with and like yeah. yeah. And it's important like to cultivate your friendships and like and your family life, you know what I mean? Ultimately, like those are the things that matter. I think you realize that at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like Oh yeah. Yeah. It's 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 beautiful, man. I yeah. talk to my parents more now under lockdown than I have in like a long time. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Which is still not a lot, but... Yeah. More than just like, hey, kid, you live? <laughs> I, know, I know. I talked to... I fucking called my grandma today. Whoa. Uh, all people are going to talk to... I have, I have grandma anxiety. I don't do know you? Why. Do other people feel like this? Like where... I don't... I get really bad anxiety. To, I'm an anxious person, I guess. To yeah. do all kinds of interacting with people. It but sounds like, like you have ang- anxiety calling, people. <laughs> calling like my grandma, I'm just like stressed out thinking that she's just old and like yeah. I don't connect very well with her, you know what I mean? So she talked about like people who are dead already. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't remember at all, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh my God, in these few splendid minutes we get to talk to each other like we're talking about. Well, that's what they're there for. Um, yeah. That's a lot of... <laughs> They're, I'm like, what's really up with you, Grandma? What are you into yeah. these days? Well, she's getting prepared to die, you know, and like, uh, <laughs> I'm smiling. I think there's nothing wrong with dying. There's, no, there's nothing. It's part of you live, you die, you live, you die, you live, you die. You know, it's good it's, for it's, Grandma. It's, she's going. She yeah, go you're either it. you're doing one or the other, right? You're my like, grandma's got a long way to go. I feel like she's tough as nails. Yeah, I think hey, mine does does as well. She's she's all there. She's kicking butt. I really had a great time talking to her. It was uh, my grandma's a badass. A fantastic conversation I had with her, and she was just talking. She got to you know just spill the about the family and like you know i was like i really my 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 communication skills have gotten a lot better because of the podcast and so i was able to like dig in and get and be like give me the fucking dirt granny you know, give me some old fucking you know like spill the beans yeah granny. we had so we do we talk give me those recipes time. before you kick the buckets but um yeah but, it, <laughs> but yeah the conversation does lead um back to death and lost friends a lot in the conversation with it and um and I, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. And I, I think a big part of life is just becoming comfortable with the the death part, becoming comfortable with the fact that people that you know are going to. It doesn't die. bother me. I know that's so yeah. weird. Like I don't need the the funeral part of grieving. I get sad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, 
but I'm like, I don't, I don't when tragic deaths, like when people, I don't want anybody to like go painfully ever, you know what I mean? But like, it just is what it is. You're here for a little while. You don't ever know what's going to happen. And I don't think it's that, uh, I think your whole purpose is to re- return yourself. You know what I mean? Like yeah. keep, keep whatever cycle is, is going, going. And like, I don't think it's all bad. I'm sure it's just fine. It is. Have you ever, um, have you ever done the DMT experience? Not yet, but I bet no. I'd be really good at it. It's, I would love to. It's pretty incredible experience to, to really, you know, leave your body like that. I in a meditated the other day. I know this is sound crazy. I did this guided meditation the other day. Uh-huh. And I like, feel like I astral, pro- I like astral projected. So like I went up and this guided thing, this guy, Michael Seeley, I follow on YouTube. And uh, he was like, you're going to like, it's a hypnosis video or not video, but you listen to it. Recording. And I don't know. He had me like just step away from my physical being and go up to the galaxies and the universe. And he was like, and just turn yourself into your essence, whatever that may be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I felt like I was glitter spiraling like against the universe. Me and the universe were doing this dance that was the most peaceful, calm thing. And he's like, you can check your body out down there. You can go back if you want, or you could stay here. Like, it was the coolest fucking feeling. I've, like, one of the coolest feelings. And this is all on nothing. This is just my morning meditation. I'm feeling this way, you know? Yeah. And he was like, you can stay or go back. You know what I mean? And, like, both are cool. And I was like, and it was like, if you go back, like, I knew I'm a conscious woman. I'm going to have my everyday. As wonderful it was dancing up there with whatever that was, you know, like, just being energy. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go back. Like. And I went back zippity doo day. Damn, I'm back. Like, yeah. happy as a clam. Like, it's a cool, it puts you at peace with your, yourself in the universe, I feel like, to do stuff like that. Does that sound crazy? No, I, I 110% agree with you. you okay. Know? I, um, being able to experience reality outside of reality, per se, or mm-hmm. outside of this three-dimensional world that we exist in, uh, it makes you appreciate it. Uh, it, ma- it makes you appreciate having the three-dimensional world. Totally. And all these limitations. And, um, and it's weird and long and short at the same time. Yeah, and, right? like, it's so weird how, like, you, I found it as I've gotten older, like, you are so powerful in our own existence. And, like, literally I can surround myself, change anything. I can put myself in whatever situations, literally being strong enough and taking the power to make action happen. As long as you stop that first ripple in the world, whatever it may be, and you set your mind towards, like, whatever it is if you're you're manifesting a goal or or whatever it is like you literally can i found like maybe this is how people grow up and and, you know i mean found like their self-will or whatever that may be i don't know but you can literally do anything you want and the only person (laughs) stopping you is you and it it. might sound crazy but like anything anything literally anything you can change your entire existence you can you decide what you surround yourself with and I don't know. I feel like we're super, like, all-powerful beings, and we truly do shape, like, our experience yeah. and our interpretation of that experience. It's, Happiness is a state of mind. It's uh, <laughs> it's all just a uh, a game we're playing with ourselves, you know? Or it's, or a video game that aliens are playing with us, much like The Sims. See, that's another thing. I have a couple. It, right? I got a couple ideas. Because, like, what if they're, like... We'll give these two a house. <laughs> 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 They'll be doing good for a couple of weeks, and then like, or like, whoever's running us up there, or wherever. Yeah. You know, having a bad day or something. <laughs> like. They're just like give all the money <laughs> to the white people. Just ruin everything. <laughs> like destroy. <laughs> exactly. You never know. Like what's. I don't know. Yeah. We're it's... not supposed to know. Yeah, we're not it's supposed fun to. to it's, it's fun to sit around and wonder, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the whole. Uh, I think that's the whole point of the game in the first place is to enjoy the mystery of it all. Like when you're watching a fucking movie, right? The worst <laughs> part of uh, is if someone or the worst thing that can happen is if someone fucking gives away the movie to you, right? I love giving away movies. <laughs> it, but it ruins the whole fucking movie, right? Like, like you're so just like, excited. you're sitting there and you're like, oh, worried. I got this three hour experience in front of me. Okay, I either get, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest, yeah. I either get excited or maybe I'm concerned the person won't get it that I'm sitting with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe I don't want them to miss it. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. some of the stuff's cheeky. I'm like, oh, this, this is gonna happen. Just get ready for it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I nearly missed that. <laughs> <laughs> What a dick. Uh, uh, or yeah. questioning your intelligence. Or I'm excited. Those are the two reasons I, I spoil people's movie experience. Movie spoiler. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I was a fall asleep. People like, let's yeah. put out a movie within minutes. Just yeah. KO'd. 
But I mean, if you're <laughs> gonna if you're gonna volunteer to spend eighty years in a virtual reality experience and have your memory wiped, you definitely wouldn't want to know what the fuck was happening, right? You're like, <laughs> uh, why what would I we, even go okay, in? Oh, don't say this because I don't want it to happen to us. I always figure this. I'm like, people who like die young and stuff. I have friends who mm-hmm. passed away, you know what I mean, through whatever reason it means. Um, I'm like, what if they figured it out? Yeah. <laughs> and that's why no one knows when because it's all of a sudden you're like walking down the street you're like, bing! <gasps> <laughs> and I'm seeing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you're like, don't question it too much, bitches. <laughs> oh, dude, it's... You uh, don't want to go under too too hard. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden you just fucking pow right yeah, you're the up. side of it. <laughs> Crap, I guessed right this time. <laughs> yep. This body, uh, it, it really is meaningless. <laughs> I don't exist. <laughs> no, Fuck. Nope, you sure don't. Not no more. <laughs> there, I, yeah, man, there you go. Can you? Yeah. I wonder about this sometimes, too. I'm like, my life experience, like, you go through periods of life. Like, time yeah. might be meaningless, but you have milestones or things that have happened that shape your memories or these building blocks of who your personality is now. Yeah. Does that make sense? And uh, I'm always, like, my life is so different from, like, four building blocks ago. Oh, that totally. I, that I feel like, is this a different simulation? Did I hit a weird button? Like, yeah. did I wish for something? I threw a pickle in there somewhere. Well, that's the quantum <laughs> you know reality I mean? that yeah. we live in, right? But like, some stuff is like so... And then there's also like what you were saying before, when you get anxiety about what your future's like. So yeah. this is fun. Think back to like four building blocks you ago. Yeah. And what you thought was going to happen. <laughs> you know? Like, not even close. Yeah. Here we are in this other thing I couldn't even imagine. Like, who? it's... Yeah, it's a total fucking Freaky trip. And, uh, no, are, are we stoners? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stoner talk. But uh, no, the, the, the quantum version of reality. Break. I know, right? And I think we're uh, actually, you know, we're running out of space on this hard drive anyways. Oh, perfect so, timing. I yeah. had a Red Bull and a giant smart water, Did you? So. Yeah. So we'll wrap this fucker up real quick This was here. fun. It has been a great time, uh-huh. right? We uh, we need to do it again for sure. I really appreciate you having, uh, having you on Talking the show. Talking about stuff. Talking about stuff With Jason and, and Rocky. Things. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this has been To the Fullest. Thank you for coming. I want to thank my guest, Rockhole yeah. Batdoor for Rocky Rockhole. Uh, yeah, you can check her out on Instagram at uh, Cherry Popped Art on Instagram. Yay. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate <laughs> having you. And uh, let's know. Uh, we're just going to fade to black. Peace. Peace. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.